Click, buy, deliver. With remote purchasing from the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing. Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing, episode one one nine. And we're delighted but to you're be not joined. Back about shit, are you? Delighted to be joined sake. at long last by international road racing star Peter and, Hickman <laughs> and uh, <laughs> current British Superbike rider, the last person to win a senior TT, Dean Harrison. How are we doing, Shaga? Uh, I'm not too bad to be honest. It's uh, eventually we got on me on here. Uh, a bit of a two-hour drive for you this morning, which I didn't realise. I thought you were going straight to Anglesey from here. I, d- well, I don't think it'll have been two hours for Dom. I didn't. Th- I didn't think you were gonna go from here to London, back to Scotland, and then here. <laughs> oh, I, I, oh no! Honestly, it's mad. I've, I've got to actually thank my dad now. My dad. I don't, I don't know what's up with him. To be fair, he's never loaned me that bike before, and for some reason, he's just gone and agreed to it. It's so, an age thing. Uh, the I, mellow is the gold. I'm not. Now you don't. Have you met my dad? Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, of course yeah, he, he races well, classics. Well, yeah, that oh god, I it's all, it's all one big community. Yeah, this uh, yeah. road racing paddock, and it's all. My dad he's just lent me the bike, so the idea was we were going to come down to go down to Anglesey, so come interview you, then cross over. But unfortunately, you've got to get the dog in the kennel, and so well, I'll have to go back up. So my dad's lent me the bike, and I'm just touring all around Britain at the moment. So well, we're here in not so sunny Bradford, thanks to the BBC weather app lying in my face. Right. I was, it's just pissed down all the way over the top. <laughs> I thought I sun couldn't believe it. The sun always shines in Bradford. Everyone's <laughs> yeah, nice. I like how you're sort of whispering that towards the end it of that. <laughs> yeah. It's always sunshine. There, and yeah. Just before we started recording, we were just talking about the, the day job and uh, you've had this place for getting on, like almost two years now. Yes, yeah, yeah. And uh, for people that don't know, what do you do in between the racing? Uh, a bit of engineering, really. Do a bit of CNC, turn in, milling and things like that, make all sorts of bits and bats. It's, uh, I think it's important to keep your mind occupied in between. Uh, but I've always, I've always done something I can't. I can't. Sit, I, I'm not one for sitting down, Joe. You know, a bit like yourself. You go always busy. You always keep busy. You can't do nothing in between, I suppose. And going to the gym all the time and drive you mad. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do before? The, like uh, before you became another racing scene. What job did you have? A trade or yeah? When you yeah left well, believe it or not, I, I went to go be a bike mechanic. So I went to work very a few bike shops. I did my apprenticeship with Suzuki. Uh, I left Suzuki. If I got married because the shop shut. Uh, I went from there and then I went to go work at Volvo and I did my apprenticeship on Volvo cars then. Oh, you did know, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I, did. I worked there for five years. Uh, obviously, as you can see, I'm a massive supporter because I drive around in a Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> I did my apprenticeship on them cars, so I thought, oh, I need a car for work, so I went and bought myself an old man Volvo estate car. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, but then, uh, now I've fallen in love with it and it's like a slipper. Is that, is Do you know what I mean? <laughs> is Guy Martin got, not that, uh, look, the really long one, is that a Volvo? Who's Guy? Long <laughs> Guy <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I'm sure another estate car that he's got it's like 600 horsepower but it looks like an old bloke's car but mine's not 600 horsepower <laughs> that is a Volvo Seven. mine's 205 I think or is it 215 I can't what, remember what spec it is what age is this car it's 2010 oh 2010 sorry I thought the way you all say an old car I'm thinking 200 ponies and an old Volvo no, no, this is, oh no my car oh, no, no he's got a P, is it a P1800 but it's obviously it's got a T6 engine in it that's a different it's another Volvo engine Right, there we are. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> so, uh, where, where were you? Where, hold on, I'm trying to think. What point? So, Volvo, Volvo engine, car engineer, and then where were you racing at this point? Because you did a lot of Irish racing as well. Where, yeah, well I was lucky. When I went to Volvo, I used to take unpaid leave. Because, obviously, <laughs> they probably only get 22 days all day. You, get, you know, it's like 22 days, normal work. Well, you work for yourself anyway, don't you? Now, and now I do, no, no, two right. go racing, because yeah, basically yeah, they wouldn't You couldn't give get the time me. off. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, I was getting unpaid leave, and then it got to a point where... Lads in the work show go, well, he's getting unpaid leave. I want unpaid leave. So then that gaffer's sort of caught between a rock and a hard post. Says, I'm sorry, you can't have any unpaid leave anymore. So I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> so then I had to make the decision of what do you do? So then I sort of went, I'd race through the summer uh, when the season were on at various road races and things like that. And then in winter, I'd just go work in a car shop. I'd go to town garage uh, up in Orsworth and go mechanicing for a winter up there. Uh, and do some because you can't winter's a long time isn't it? you know, saying once you finish it's like October season finishes mm-hmm. so once you finish in October you've only got what two week in, or week in November at Macau aye uh, and then you've got December, January, February, March four or five months where you're back at work as normal and did, did you go straight into Irish road racing as a put did you do like club racing or anything for yeah you? no I did some club I actually won a club championship did you when I was uh, in the day <laughs> what did you just, sat down before six, you said that what, 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 did, what did you start on I had CBR 600 I've never, that's the littlest bike I've ever ridden. Really? I, I didn't start racing until 19. All right. 18, 18, sorry, 19. I didn't start racing. Right. And then just straight into, what was it like? I just bought a CBR 600. I had a road, what, what, what actually happened was, to start the story off, 
for rewind a little bit. I uh, I had a, obviously passed my bike test at 17, uh, so I could get a, a bike. And then I got a little VFR 400 for the road. I got knocked off, I had it like two weeks, got knocked off uh, on the way home from the bike show I worked at, wrote the thing off. Uh, then when I got me and Sean's payout, that's how I bought my first racing bike. That's how I'd have been 18, 19 after I'd have got it all sorted out. And you, went, and you decided to go for a CDR 600? Just, well, the, the problem is I bought a stock six because for me to run any other bike, when you buy yourself, what are you going to do? Whereas you could get a 600, just press on and start. And yeah, it makes sense. And it's just easy. <laughs> and b before that, did you never have an opportunity when you were growing up? Like, did you did your dad never, like, sort of look to push you into racing as a kid or anything? No. Was it... Because, do you know yeah, what I mean? It, Usually it, from, like, racing heritage, like, racing stock. Yeah, no, but the thing is with my dad, he was just that busy racing sidecars himself. Because he, 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 he was doing that and he was concentrating doing what he sort of doing. I just... I went along, don't get me wrong, but I never... I had a field bike and stuff, mm -hmm. but I never did like motocross, school by motocross or oh competitive any sort of level. I never raced. Oh, I just yeah. Did you yeah, always have like growing up through the paddock? Did you always have your eye and think, oh, one day I would love to do this? Or I always wanted to do the Isle of Man because as a kid, you see, I went to the Isle of Man every year since '93. Obviously, it works me all man that well. It, it when it's changed a bit now because when when I was younger, like no, like now you've got to get so many signatures for your license. Yes, it didn't I. used to be like that. No. Nah. So my old man only used to go do, let's say, he might do Scarborough, a Southern, and TT. So I just go road race, road race, road race. There were no like then there were a Cadwell and stuff in between, maybe. Do you get what I mean? So there were no like I didn't I go only, like, only if you were desperate. Yeah, you know, that's what I mean. You, there were no like go. I did. We did, did, did do some short circuit with, but there were no like British championships and things like that. We did so do. He did do British clubmans, I think he did and stuff like that. But with sidecars, mm -hmm. but you just when you're eight, nine, ten, twelve years old, you're in your own little world of just going around play sort of thing. I never never sort of thought, right, I want to go race this bike. But when it once they got like 14, you think, oh, I want to go do the Isle of Man. Aye, it? it just started clicking in. Just, so, that's it. Hold on, did your dad, your dad was um, a solo pilot as well, because your, your brother, ra now, was, your, was your brother racing? No, my dad's racing? always been, my dad's sat, my dad actually started sidecar passenger. Right, I thought he was, He passengered right. for my granddad, who also raced sidecars. Uh, <laughs> so my granddad raced sidecars, and then my dad passengered for him for a bit, and then he started to drive sidecars himself. Right. So, was your brother racing before you then? I'm just trying no, to... No, no, my brother started after me. I started and at... But your brother's... Four years old. All right. So, he'd have been 24 or something, will he, when he started, 23. Right. Yeah. And only because he saw you bombing around at the bike Because I did a bit of crack. Went to Elvington Airfield. Remember Elvington? <laughs> I've never actually been. Have you been to Elvington? No, I've heard about it. It's right, near yeah. York, He's, isn't it? That's it. Yeah, you literally you... turned up at... That was my first ever race. I turned up at an airfield. Yeah, have you ever been round East Fortune, by the way? I've been... Oh. But I've never been round because we did we did a podcast not too long ago. We didn't even know where it was, man. It was me. Right. No, no, I have been. I, I've been to East Fortune with her, but I've never raced round there. So you like I, that? That's mad to believe. I, like, so you've grown up literally from day one on the Isle of Man every year with your dad, like proper old school. Yeah, that's like well, that's like well, then you. Yeah. That's mint, like, because that he's literally like that's how I grew up, but he's a lot, 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 lot faster than me. So, <laughs> do you know you going back to your first Jesus. ever race? Was it an instant? Like, soon as soon as you um, came home from your first meeting, did you know that like it had sort of scratched an itch and you wanted to? I just I did it because I liked doing it. You, you, I never in my wildest dreams thought right. That's it. I'm gonna go win the Isle of Man. Really? I just. I, I I wanted it's something you I wanted to do. I, I want to go do the Isle of Man. So you think right? What what can I do to get it? So I did a few club meetings. Then I did I did I did as little races as possible to get to Scarborough. Because when I were a kid, I remember you know the wooden fence at Scarborough. And they've got the little squares. Mm -hmm. I remember not being tall enough to look over the wood. <laughs> no, so you'd look through the squares and like for some reason it was in me. I like oh I have to race here. Because when when does that some when when that's all you see, mm -hmm. it almost just sets itself in your head, doesn't it? It's like an impression. Uh, regardless of what else is going on in in the world, and I'm like, oh, I've got to do that. So I, I did that, uh, and then after that, I went to Irish road racing. As soon as I got my national license, I did Scarborough. Then rode for Billy, did Irish road racing. But, hold on, Billy McKinstry. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, did all that, and then I did the TT. We were 22 when I did the other one. Oh, so you didn't go to the Manx? No, you went straight, went straight to the TT. To TT. Right. I'd, I'd only raced for four years and went straight to TT. Hold on, didn't you win the the uh, the senior support championship in Ireland? No, I won a lot of races, but I only did like uh, three quarters of the season. I didn't do the full championship. I missed Cookstown and then I crashed at like, Killer Lane. I think it was called Killer oh, Lane. Oh, I remember that. The yellow bike, wasn't it? That's yeah. I crashed down an R six, uh, and then I, I could have won the championship that day, but they wouldn't let me race as or no. 
you're not racing. So they won't let me because they said I were too injured. So anyway. <laughs> right. And, so and so you know, when you did take the plunge and start, say, like going over to Ireland and doing Irish road racing, was that... Uh, I, just went over, I went over by myself in my car. I was gonna. Well, I was just about to say, was that ever a thing with your dad? And like, how was your was your dad supportive of it? Was he? Yeah, like, he came involved? Out, it, it, My dad came to me first one. My dad came up, went to go do bush. Uh, so my mum goes, oh, "I'll come with you." So me and my dad went over and did the bush one, and then he, he came to a couple. He and my mum came to another one in Southern Ireland, and then the other ones I did in between. I just sort of travel over. With, I'd, well, I just to drive my car to Stranra, get on the boat, and then meet somebody at the other end. They'd take me there, do the race, come back, get on the boat. Drive on. Was that a paid ride? No, 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 sorry. I mean, did you pay to ride that bike or was Billy just going, no, I didn't, a bike? I, it didn't cost me anything to ride it. Right. But obviously it just cost oh, me obviously to get the travel. there. Yeah. Oh, right. Bloody hell. Mint. Right. So how did you, you and Billy, like, how did that relationship just start then? First time I went to Scarborough, I won the B final. Ah. So he rang me up. So I said, do to come and do some Irish support? I went, yeah, right then. <laughs> Literally as clean as that. So That's you had no ambition to go over to Ireland. So which ones haven't you done in Northern, not even the Northern The only one I had was so every time I went game. over, it would cancel. No, like it would cancel. Then the year it'd be on, I'd be doing something else, and it just always fell that it would that way. Yeah. What What's your favourite out of all of the Irish national races? Uh, I like Ar- Armour is a good one. Armour is. Like, you like Armour? Oh, yeah. I love Armour. Yeah, that's a good. One. Mm-hmm. That's not like the smaller nationals. Yeah, yeah. Armour is probably a good one. I'm trying Everyone to says Tandragee is really good, but obviously it's always fallen when I haven't been able to get there. I was about to say because yeah. Tandragee is min. I've only done it the once, but it's one hell of a track, like yeah. without a doubt. So, no. is that is that something we're going to see Dean Harrison doing in the future? Kind yeah, of no, thing? I will. I'd love to go back over there. I'll, I'll do some now, but it's just time, isn't it? You, I can't. We're doing the BSB with silicone. It's so difficult to be able to do everything you want. Uh, and I, it's, I'm doing BSB now, and to be given an opportunity to do BSB isn't something that everyone gets is it exactly so i think i'm fortunate and luckily clarissa has given me uh, the team an opportunity to go right you do that and we'll concentrate on that and it doesn't really make you faster for doing the tt it's a fact doing that mate you you know yourself you did uh alton park super sport and you've done a couple of different ones you know how competitive is obviously you're a super stock champion you know how competitive is this year so it just drags you on mm-hmm. uh it's, it's frustrating sometimes because I think I think I feel like I could do better, right? If you know what I mean, you're like trying to find that bit all the time, and it's it's good. Okay, well let, let's jump down that rabbit hole then, because you had a top ten at Donington Park. Yeah, outstanding. Now where were like where were you sitting up to that point? You know what I mean? You were struggling to get into the. Top... No, I thought I was fourteen for in race one. Fourteenth, you know what I mean? So you, you I, are... I score points like that. I'm always yeah, not a million. It's just it's no, it's like oh, isn't it? you are a million mile off that you're not a million mile off. I th- I, from you're the, ta- you're, from like the sidelines, I think you've made a massive step. Massive. Obviously, you missed last year, but you've made a massive step from the year before. Yeah, um, exactly. In terms yeah. of your like, if you looked at your lap times in compared to super stock lap times, yeah, you've went from you've made a big step, and you're doing like I mean, the, we were just talking before about the sort of lap times that you'd like to, in the twenty sevens at Cardwell, which is unbelievably impressive. Um, real good lap times at Donington like everywhere this year really it's been yeah so- Donington you know the, my dry pace were quite good I had a really good dry pace I just could never piece my lap together mm-hmm. you know it's like it's like mm-hmm. I can do that and the ideal's like even quicker than so, I'm going um, when you're talking about just getting in the points as well as if like sort of playing that down this year this to be British. just getting in the points <laughs> there's been like sort of around Brooksy Kyle Ride uh, like ab- absolutely top top class riders, world class riders, or uh, uh, when the, if the bike setup's tiny bit off, they're sort of around that area. So to be to be sneaking points at BSB and like a top ten and an eighth at Donington is um, yeah. It, it, Come it, on, son. Yeah. <laughs> I just get frustrated because you always want more, don't you? Every, it's it's racing, racing, isn't it? You know, and you're like fuck. No, yeah. I mean, I'm like no, it's one of them. But do I, you, I, I do get frustrated to be honest. I get a bit disheartened about it sometimes. I think. Yeah, but that's com- that's called competitative nature. Yeah, that. I suppose, it, it wouldn't yeah, be a good racer without it. It, it looks like sometimes when you want, when you want a bike to do something and you don't, you like trying to explain to your team. I want it. You try to make it better for you, but you ha- it's hard to relay it across sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like that's a something I struggle with a little bit. I was about to say, what's ch- like with having a year out as well. Bearing in mind, what's it, it was ch- hard coming back. I've, I've sort of, but you've come back faster. I'd like, what's I know, have, yeah. changed uh, in I, your mind to do that. Uh, I know it'd be quite hard to put a finger on it. But yeah, no, it? I know what you're saying. Yeah, I, I think it sounds daft, but you no, know, like because obviously you're so engrossed in doing your road racing, aren't you? You come yeah. and like you'd come in, you'd drop in, you do maybe one or two rounds, you go to your road racing again. Yeah. You, and whereas this year I've concentrated on it a little bit more, and I feel like I still feel like I'm lacking something. Right. 
Do you know what I mean? I feel like I, I generally feel that like there's more there to be had from it, and I, I, yeah. I don't know. I, just... I, think, I think that advantage of uh, doing, say, British Championship, it gives you, like, say, if you were just doing road racing and you would you were at a, a high level, but you wanted to make a step, you you would be searching for tents by, like, say, trail breaking a little bit further into a corner, and sort of taking risks on the front, like asking more out of the front end yeah. in certain places, but with lampposts and walls. But road racing, you don't ride like that. Go on, you go on. You tell us how how do you ride them? You don't. The, all uh, the, the road racing style is completely different. I I ride. I wouldn't ride. It ain't completely different. No, but I wouldn't apply. It's, 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 I can't explain it. It's just different. The the point I was going to make is you if flow I do, more by doing British Championship. It gives you a chance to like try things. And yeah, it does. It, it yeah. Sort of refine your skills in a safer environment. You so learn that, a lot with the bike as well. In terms of bike setup. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because like you've got to think if you're going on Cadwell Park or Alton Park, you're going over the jumps and things like that. That there's these information that will transfer across, I think. Yeah. So there's that's a valuable part of it, massively. Mm. And just like uh, bum and seat time as well, I think. Which bike fitness? Mm. You could be the fittest man in the world. Like you, I could, you could go cycle. I could cycle for hours and hours and hours cycling around. But you know, then you do. If you just did that all the time, you didn't ride a bike for six months. Mm. You get back on a bike after the first day, and you'd be like, I'm knackered here because you're just not physically your bike fit. You need to be doing it all the time. Mm-hmm. Fair. Oh, well, no, I'm just th- sitting in soaking this up. No, it's all, it's all about learning for me. This it's it's like it's interesting because you hear a lot of lads going eat. You know, they put percentages on. You know, like Mate, if, someone, around, if somebody riding and oh, everyone does ninety percent. Don't they? Fucking, you just get an idiot to do ninety five and win. I'm, it's a load of bollocks. No, Every, no, you set off on that line and you try as hard as you can. Of course you, you do. try as hard as you can, and I try as hard as I can. Mm-hmm. Right, but it's when you finish the race. It's what you come. It's the information you come back with to process to make you feel faster the next time. Right, there we are then. Do you, no, because I, like, I'm 100% agreeing with you. Does everyone, like, you know, it's, oh, do you ride 90? But do a bollocks? I'm, I, I, am, everyone, I, am, I am trying. I know, I everyone am, goes out and school as fast as they can, don't they? Do, do, do you know, <laughs> like, I'd, I'd imagine, I've never done it myself, but I'd imagine the buzz that you get from uh, pure road racing, especially the TT, is second to none. When you do, say, British Championship, you know, you race at Cadwell Park, for example, does it feel a bit flat in comparison? Intense. It feels uh, more intense. It's intense, isn't it? Because it sounds daft, right? Uh, the best way to describe it, in the Isle of Man, it'd be 2018, I think. When we used to do the Saturday, there used to be a Saturday practice on, it was 600 only. Do you remember Aye. that one? They were the weather, right, one day on the Saturday were absolutely, literally a perfect blue. There wasn't even a cloud in the sky. You and Hutchie did six laps. Yes. Six laps on right. first night. Right, so it was like... You couldn't get better weather, right? And it was don't know, like when you can literally you can see Scotland from the Isle of Man. It's that clear, mm-hmm. right? And I went out and I did six laps, so two laps tank fuel, two laps tank fuel, two laps tank fuel, right? And you couldn't. There's no words that can describe just riding around your bike. It's first practice. Nothing matters. There's no stress, no pressure. The last two laps, because everyone were blowing out their ass because they'd already done four. There were barely a bike on the track. I saw nobody. Right, for literally two laps on track and you're just riding around in your own space. And I always try and do a lap time by myself because if you can do it in the Isle of Man, you've realised you're setting off in your no man's land, aren't you? Mm-hmm. There's nobody to chase. There's nobody to use them as a gauge. You're doing your own thing, do you know what I mean? Mm. Whereas when you go short circuit riding, you all set off. It's, it's literally like a bull rodeo, right? And there's a lot of red rags everywhere. And you wait, and then they lift the flag at the end and everyone just goes mental. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're like, and everyone wants to crash into you. Do you know what I mean? You're just like, even like it, like the way people ride on the, the one that went, they don't just want to, some riders do, don't get me wrong. Like uh, Dan Linfoot, if Dan passes you, you could almost get a bike between you and him because you can see he has respect for other riders on the track. Mm-hmm. Do you know when people are, but you get other riders on there, when they pass you, there's room for them to give you room, mm-hmm. they just don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> they almost just come past and they're resting you near and you're thinking, what are you achieving by doing this? <laughs> you know, I don't understand it. On, on that topic, obviously... Uh, you know the... about pushing people off. You, I, I think I saw you. <laughs> you pushed somebody off at Cadwell at All Benz at the uh, weekend. You were I, was, I was stood there watching that and I was like, what a twat. Really? Honestly, he pushed it. Lad smashed his bike to bits. He went up the inside of it at All Benz. It's across the ground. I'm like, well, that were a bit out of order. <laughs> that, that's how you describe a short BSB short circuit. You there. Yeah. That is it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you, you need to give us your to, your view on events for that. Yes, I did actually run through that on the last podcast, but um, oh, oh. yeah, basically, <laughs> I didn't listen to that. Yeah, so. uh, quite, it, is, it isn't actually out yet. To be fair, all oh, right. Okay. Uh, so 
And I'll give him another shout out. <laughs> it, the lad's called TJ Toms. I'd right. like to apologise again to I did, TJ Toms. No, no, I did. I, I went, fair enough, do you know what? I made mistakes. I went to see him afterwards. And no. what I, I mentioned this on the last one as well. He went so far up in my estimations because I didn't really know the kid. I went went round expecting a bit of a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was going to, you know, him and his dad and team maybe going to sort of give us a bit of grief for it. And I would have just said, look, I'm like really sorry and explain my side sort of thing. And... Um, could not have been any more like nice and just said obviously he, he knew I wouldn't have done it on purpose and were you going for a lap time yeah it was qualifying it was the last three minutes of qualifying and, and was... I'd nailed the, I'd nailed the first two sectors was that your fastest on the mountain. lap I was up on that lap oh. and then basically what happened was and I, I didn't know this because I went to apologise and yeah. he said it wasn't actually my fault uh, the lad that crashed right. TJ he said as he came over the mountain somebody came out of pit lane a slow rider so the blue flags came out so he kind of half knocked off and it sort of left him in no man's land and yeah. obviously I was on a hot lap went underneath him and he lifted up went went on the grass and crashed but um, so yeah like I said I've uh, I, I apologised at the time, <laughs> yeah. but I was going to I was going to ask you because it is quite topical at the moment about especially in super bikes, you know, especially at Donington. It, they were talking about it on the TV a lot about um, sort of lack of respect between riders. Do you, I don't know why. Do you see? Have you seen yeah, the no, change you, in track? You can, this year? yeah, the, you can visibly see on TV, can't you? Yeah. You don't, have to, you don't have to be riding the bike. You can see it from the outside looking. But I, I don't know why. What do you think? Why? Why, why do you need? I, I don't know. It was like uh, Glenn apologised on the start line the other day for waving his hand when Christian fell off. Yeah. Why? Why would you? Why? Why, why wave your hand to start with? I, I just don't understand the. I can understand if you've got grief off track or things like that, but you almost feel you need to contain it and don't show it. Mm-hmm. But I, I, again, I, I don't know because I'm not in that situation. I'm so yeah. it's difficult to to split bloom about upsetting somebody or something like you shouldn't have said this and shouldn't have said that and mm-hmm. getting tickled out, which I, I can't be asked with. Yeah, right. Do you know what I mean? So I I don't know why they're doing it, and I don't think I can't see why it'd make you faster. Yeah, do. You? And the, not not at all. The, the, only... the aggression side of it. Yeah, well, by by passing somebody disrespectfully, why does that make you faster? No. Mm-hmm. Do you think it would be something to do with mind games if you were chasing a championship kind of thing? Uh, no, in your opinion. You know, it's could, a bit. I, I get what you're saying. No, it doesn't make sense. I get that. No, I totally do. That that could be it. But I mean, it's they're not even. It's not even that, is it? Because no one's no one's pushing no haller enough. Can't get near. No one catching. I don't think. <laughs> But yeah, you know what I'm, saying, what I'm saying yeah, he, yeah. He's, he's at the front, right? He, this uh, I, this is happening sort of like from third, like around sort of mid pack, not mid pack, mm. you know, like in mm. a bunch that's all close. It's not like the front three whole. Lot. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't know. Yeah. I I would say it's it is mainly the superbike class this year. I, I have not like in in both superstock classes and the lower classes. I've I don't think it's changed from the past. No, I, I, no, I think you're right. No, I, it's I think the same. Yeah. I, I would say f- from personal experience this year, it's been uh, superstock been very like sort of respectful. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Like well, you can 90, see that. Yeah, ninety nine percent of the of the passes on track. Well, look like Hutchie. Spot Hutchie on. took uh, Mossy out the weekend. Yeah, complete he mistake. Did, didn't mean to do it. Exactly. He, he, yeah. you know what I mean, he, he even apologised. Sorry, I didn't first time. I've sucked somebody out and I didn't really do it. Mossy, t- yes, don't worry about it, takes it on the chin, and that's fine, and that's just done and forgotten about. Aye. Yeah. Which is, that's how it should be. Because, like I say, nobody, well, you hope nobody intentionally takes anybody out because that's not fair, is it? There's God. no need for that. Uh-huh. But, in, like I say, in the Superbike, there's been a bit of argy bargy. But... Have you ever had any um, sort of accidental run ins <clears throat> with anyone, either at the teat, like road racing? Yeah, or... I once crashed into Michael Rutter at Parliament Square, but that was by accident. I apologise. Oh, what, gee, I no, no, you uh, let you. Hey, I, you I came, I came it, yeah. up the inside of me. It's almost like he released the brake. When you watch it on the camera, it's almost. like I get on here and he just goes whoot, and I went ah, and I thought I brake and just clipped the back of him. But you both don't. Stayed you, on. You, 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 you know, don't fall off, bro. Right? Both stayed. You, you, you wouldn't. We wouldn't. Well, it'd been like a stupid fall and you side crashing on. You're doing about twenty mile an hour. Right? You're at Palace Square, so it'd have been embarrassing more than all else. But no, yeah. that were it. But. Michael's been in the game long enough now that he'd done. I said sorry, and he was fine. Mm-hmm. That were it. But that was out years ago, twenty seventeen, something like that. Quite Jesus, what have been? So, what was your first dabble in the British? Then you were super sport, was it? I did. Yeah, because I didn't. I, did, I didn't do a shot series. Yonks. I did four super. I wrote. I went to go ride for. Uh, yeah, I was about to say we'll have to go back. Silicone twenty sixteen. Yeah. Then I did at the end of twenty sixteen. I did four super sport rounds. Then the year after, I did four super stock rounds. And then I did the superbike. Mm-hmm. That was it. But I didn't like go do like loads of superbike. I just did with the superbike we had for the roads. I'd go do an odd round mm-hmm. in between the roads. Can, that were it. Can you explain like 
why that why those choices were there so why super sport then he thought right well let's go from there to that to that what i don't know it's like a team thing all right yeah the team like well we'll do this we'll try that and just that, that, anyway yeah. in a sort of spiral from there and now we've doing what we're doing now right oh no i just thought me super sport let's see how we get on then think right actually we need a bit more yeah. big bike time and was it literally yeah. those decisions You're probably right yeah because when you when we, you know it's like road racing you ride you, you know, yourself you can ride a 600 a sock or so it's always different so i suppose it's good to just ride each bike aye it's like we've got the news that extend that you're on at work now it's never turned a wheel i says oh, i wouldn't mind taking it out let's go to a stock round as well on it one weekend mm-hmm. just for some I, I, the bike's getting built at the minute it's never turned a wheel why not see what it's like at a stock round just for a, just to have a roll out on it mm-hmm. i was about to say i think i've asked this question before there's nothing stopping a super bike lad jumping on an extra class is there no no you the, the people have done it before you can do two classes if you want you so that would be good to see. Yeah, that would be good to see. You doing work. both of them? Oh, it would be hard. I'm work. old now. You do, see, so. do you have Shut a up, man? Do you have a twin as well? <laughs> no, no, I got a twin. No. And is is that for any particular reason? Uh, a lot of it's just time in it. You know, when you're, you know, like with practice and stuff like that in the Isle of Man, you only get so much practice, and you know, you've got when you've got three bikes and you're jumping between three, just to chuck another in the equation just makes life even even harder, really. <laughs> and if you get, you know, like if they sometimes run the twin practice first, don't they? Yeah, they tend to put it out at the same time as with the 600 Yeah, side. exactly. But if you go out on a twin and break down and you can't get back, your whole night's ruined. You know that you know that year you're on about where we, you did six laps? Yeah. I did two laps with me 600 and went, right, let's go with the twin. Bah, Braden just just died of death. And I was like, shite. And I just watched you go around for another well, five that's laps. That's my point. Yeah, there like, you oh, go. Then. You're stuck sick. out on track. Because mm. the twins do break down. Because the thing with a twin, unless you're going to go by the new Aprilia and just ride it, because it's got 90 odd horsepower standard. Mm-hmm. Like the Kawasaki and the, the Yamaha you can use now, they're only like 60 horsepower. So to bring them up to standard or to tune them, mm. there's that many things being changed. The chances of things going wrong are quite high. Yeah. Because they're so highly tuned, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Have you ever had a go on a pad? No. 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 But you, you... I'd like, I'd, 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 you know what? I loved riding them. Because I won the t- my first TT first on one t- in 2014. Yeah. And I loved riding that. And I built, built the bike and, it, and, it, and I really enjoyed doing it. It was just, after that, I thought I've done that. Then I won the super sport race, and it's like right, and you sort of then you pr- moved on really. Because mm-hmm. that was the Stuart Smith one. No, no, was no, that RC no. Express? Because yeah. you rode twins up to that point. Yeah, I rode. Yeah, I did rode Stuarts before that. Yeah. Now, did you get a podium on that bike? No. Yeah, second. Jesus, on Stuarts bike. Yeah. So, like, oh, I feel. Let's go. I feel like we should go back again here. So right. it's a bit you like get a did... Delorean out in a minute. Uh, to the Delorean out. <laughs> <laughs> so we went from the Irish scene with Billy McKinstry. Yeah. And then it was a case, what happened? Where, what was your next stage? I um, rode for RC Express. That was it. No, I didn't. No, was I didn't. It? I tell a lie. I've missed a link. I rode for Paul Shoesmith on a BMW. Did you? That was your first year on the big yeah, bike. Yeah, but... when I did my first TT, I, I just went by myself. In fact, I rode an Ian Bell's bike. I rode for Ian Bell. There uh, was the Yamaha. connection. Do you remember the Ian Bell Yamaha? Because co- like, Ian and your dad were the good friends and racing. Yeah, and Carl that was and it. The, whole, uh, the whole Ian Bell family is lovely. Uh... Well, they're from the northeast, you know, so there you go. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, they are, and I rode a, an R6 for them uh, when I did my first TT. Yeah. So I had their R6, and I got me out an R1. I got a thousand, but I'd never ridden a thousand before. It was the first time you rode a thousand at Danbury Hill. No, I did Scarborough on it. Right. Yeah. Then it, went down real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just on the topic, just on the quick just, topic of uh, Scarborough and thousands. Do, obviously, right now the ACU have limited uh, Scarborough to just running a maximum of six hundred yeah. CC machines. Do you think that's a good call, or would you like to see the return of the thousand? It's a shit call. Yeah. It's it's a why, shit why, call. Why, uh, speed wise, is hardly out in it. Right. Look at Super Sport and Super Bike. What's mm-hmm. lap time difference? Or Super Stock and Super Sport? Yeah. What's the difference? Next to nothing. You fall like you fall off on, a, on you have crashes on little bikes. Little bikes go faster around corners. Mm-hmm. You don't crash in a straight line, do you? Yeah. So with, big you, bikes oh, shit, just go shit. fast down straight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we are. But I, I don't. I, to me, I, I don't understand it. And the thing with the six hundred class at the minute is, who knows what's going on with it? Because what's your opinion on that? Then do you think no, there's I think a future? It's, I, no, no. Well, the the thing is, I, I want there to be a future because I think the super sport class is such a good class. It's huge. It's like <laughs> uh, really for our sport. Yeah, exactly. I think. The thing is, right, I, I, I just don't know. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously, at the minute, there's no, you can't buy a 600. Yamaha don't even make theirs as a road bike in the UK normally. But you can buy them it's on a the race deal, bike, yeah. But that's the only one. There's no, You can't buy a Kawasaki, a Suzuki, a Honda. You can't buy them. Mm-hmm. That was going to be my next question here, because Kawasaki have got these 636s out. Yes. And now, do you think they should be eligible? Because when you look at Bradley, Perry and Kennedy, you know what I mean? Yeah, but the, their bike's quicker. Than, look at Jack Kennedy's bike. It's not quite quick, is it? 
No. It's not quick, no. But all that's changed. It's the actual ball size is the same. It's the stroke of the con. It's actually the, the size of the con rod. The Geeling 600's faster down the straight. Than and the that's 636. a 600? Yeah. That's so that, it, 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 The only reason why it's not 636 is because you can buy a new one. That's it. So you can't buy a new ZX6. So I think it should be because anyway, what are you going to race? It's like with the there GP2s at the minute. That's a difficult one, I think, because the current Moto GP bike or the Moto 2s are a 765. Mm -hmm. The ones at GP2 are all 600 Hondas or they've yeah. got a 600 ish engine in them. Do you know what I mean? Or, and you're like, well, they're also obsolete. Mm. Aren't they? Because the Moto, the Moto GP where they derive from has now got a 765 engine. But Kyle rides in a 765 and aren't they introducing the 959s? Uh, yeah, the 899 Ducatis, I think. Oh, no, it is 959. It's a 95, it's yeah, a V2 yeah. now, isn't it? Yeah. A V2. Yeah, right. So they're introducing that this year. I'd, I'd be interested to see how that goes. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I, the, Honda, the good thing about it is you, with, um, and it's Scott Smart's job to kind of basically even up. Police the, it, basically. Yeah, police it and it make sure there's parity amongst manufacturers. And I guess, although it's a little bit of a mess at the moment, a year of sort of trial and error this year to get things sorted. Uh, Josh Day is going to be riding the Ducati in Supersport next year as well. So there'll be at least one Ducati in the championship. Mm -hmm. You've got the new Triumphs, you've got the 636s. And hopefully by the end of this year, they'll they'll level it up so that all the... And I, I agree with you. I totally agree. Cause I, I do believe that that's a really good class. And I think if you're like kids now that start at 14 on the Moto 3s and things like that, and they might do the Supersport 300s at 17, 18, and then go on to the... Super Sport class, or what? What is this? What would be called the Super Sport class? Whether it's on a Ducati or a 636 or a 765, I I think it's such a good thing to have the stepping stone between that and Stock Thou. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're going from a Super Sport 300, for example, or a Moto 3 bike onto a Stock Thou or even a Super bike, mm -hmm. it is a big jump. Yeah. It is a big jump, but also logistically, it's actually probably a better. Like you know, you're talking about that Ninja 300 and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Like the logistics side of it, you're probably actually better off going straight to a Stock Thousand. Aren't it? Because of the limited options within Supersport. But the fact that if they open up the door, yeah, it's exactly. going to keep the I like the more the ball rolling. The GP2 class. Yeah. I find that interesting because you get people doing a bit of different things. It's like a bit of old school racing. As in the engineering side. Yeah, oh, exactly. Because totally. I'm a fan of that anyway. I like it. Well, this guy's made his own bike and put that engine in it. Uh -huh. I like that. That's a good thing. I mean, as long as it's safe and it's right, why can't you have a go? And it also it brings, I think that helps bring other interests into it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? For like the Tidcraft twin. God, that was a thing of beauty. That did you ride that? No, I didn't know. But do you know what I mean? Do you ever see that? had that for years. But they banned that, didn't they? Because they yeah. saw that's going to go too far with that class. But it proves that these people that there are interested in making chassis and having their own ideas on suspension linkages and so on. You know, I, I find that quite interesting. Should they allow that class in the TT? In your opinion, which class? Like GP two kind of thing. These bespoke. Well, they're they're sides gonna, of it. They're going to have to do, aren't they? Yeah. Because if not, there's going to be no six hundred race. That's it. What, what else? What, what else can you do? You, you need you have to you, you have to fill it in. So whatever world and sort of cause at the trial and at BSB, then it'll go to world. You says yeah. That'll TT will follow suit. Follow suit. Well, well, the, 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 but it was a Dave Tyson saying that, wasn't it? There's no like official release on that news that the fact that the six three six is going in the worlds. But if yeah. it does, like you say, TT should follow suit. But the TT can do their own thing, can't they? They're actually into it. They base their rules on. Worlds, yeah, but, but the, they, they the, could the, do the their problem, own thing, The problem they? will come is the TT races the bikes that the teams have. Aye. If no one's racing 600 anymore, there's no class for a 600. Mm. Why have we invested a lot of money in a 600 for a fortnight? Is, Why that's it. You need, it needs to be someone that's ridden all year round. Plus, that makes it safer. Is your yes. super sport bike the ZX6? Yes, I'm on yeah. a 600 ZX6. At the Isle of Man, you're not allowed a 636. Right. So mine is just a ZX6. Right, at the, mo at the moment, but that could possibly change in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Oh, I'm trying to think, what's the lap record around there on the 600? You did a 20. Have you got that lap record on the 600? No, Michael's Michael in a 29 it. one. I did a 29.05. Jesus, wet man. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the lap record in Super Sport Race 1. I have it in Super Sport Race 2, I think. Something like that. If you get each lap record goes per race. Yeah. Do you know so that, um, out, oh, that's class. Out of all the sort of top, uh, the top doers at the TT, are you? Do you sort of communicate in between the race? Now you're like sort of mates, mates with many of them, or do you, is it just a case of like you turn up at the TT once a year and see them? No, I, I speak to Lee. That's about it. Aye. Oh, James Lee, I speak to James. Uh -huh. It was cool to see him racing. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, night. James is a nice lad. Uh, I don't know if I saw speak to. Yeah, well, no. Speak, speaking about Hilliard, didn't he? Yeah, uh, like that's the first time he's been there in twelve years or something like that. Yeah, what did I read. Read. 
That, that's outstanding, that mind, to be he's fair. Got, he's got an eye opener at weekend for him. What? I bet. He's got his little son in the Ovali class as well. That's, that's why we're there, yeah. You, um, you've got a few kids, haven't you? Yeah. With seven or something? There's seven kids. That, no, I don't know what for. <laughs> how, how many kids have you got? <laughs> Two. Two. And uh, in the future, will like? do you think you would like to get them racing as, uh, as kids? Or? I'll ask him. I, t- I tell I'm you not what, pushing him in if we're whatever he wants to do. Yeah. I, mm. I've seen him go around the paddock, man. With you on that little, <laughs> little tri but he's fully flat out already, man. He's like that fully cable stretching. There's yeah. not a person think... that doesn't go by going. I wonder who kids that is. <laughs> <laughs> do you think? think... You, do you think you would be a, like a super chilled racing dad, or do you think you would be a bit uh, oh, like sort of motocross dad? Nah, oh no, nah, chill that. I won't go more because it's too dirty for my liking. <laughs> Couldn't do with the mud. <laughs> God, nah, this is, I tell you, you heard it first here, kids. I'm chasing the race, and let's nah, see what you like in another ten years. Screaming yeah. at your kid from the no, side. I see what, I see what. He, he actually watched the old Harley. Is it old? What did you say? Old Harley. Old Harley. Old Harley. He says to me, oh, Can we get one of South Africa, folks? So <laughs> 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 Just pick up the phone to Peter and go for That's what, what he says to me. Oh, no. Do you, do you know, <laughs> uh, like, from what you know now and your experience through the sport, is there any part of you that wishes that uh, you started racing as a kid with, you, like, say, in the young, like the one two fives and sort of, or are you happy the way you've done it starting at 19? Uh, no, it'd be nice to start young, wouldn't it? But it's it's one of them, isn't it? Who, who, who at fourteens can go afford a new motorbike? Mm-hmm. I had a paper round. Yeah, I got three pound fifty a week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what you could do? You know what I mean? It's one of them, isn't it? What realistically? I I don't know. Like you see these kids at fourteen and fifteen racing a Moto GP or Moto oh, three Moto three bike. Someone's bit. Someone's paying. Mm-hmm. Someone's yes. got some money somewhere to do it. Do you know what I mean? It's one of them. I didn't have any. I didn't have any money. Yeah. I live in Bradford, as you can see. But <laughs> if, if you did have the opportunity, you you maybe would have. In... Of course, you would have done. Yeah, yeah anyway, of you would have done. Of course, you would. Yeah, but the opportunity wasn't there, and you're not going to be bitter about it. Are you? You've yeah. just got to be appreciate the things that you, I have got and I have done. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, speaking of your your dad earlier as well, does he does your dad still compete? Yeah, yeah, he was racing at uh, Croft at the weekend. How did the, he? Get is on? it the Laird of Battle, Laird of Croft Battle no, of Britain? Battle, Battle of Britain. Yeah, nine, yeah I think you there at the weekend. Was that the fir- that was was that the final round of the British? Sidecar. I think it was because they were down to the champions, didn't they? I think. Or who yeah, won the championships? Like yeah, well, yeah, that was the last round. Yeah. In fact, no, I know it won't be because I'm sure he says there's another knock. There's a knock hill. Right. So no. Maybe up for that. For yeah. That. Uh, no, he's not. He's coming to Snetterton with me. Oh, man. He's taking the truck. All oh, right. So he's not. He's not going up for the final round of that. No, no. There we he's, are. He's going to come to Snetterton instead. No, oh, spot. On. I, tell, I tell you what. That's an interesting fact. Mentioning his dad, like the full the Harrison family. You know, your brother races as well. But it's like you're the only family to have every TT trophy. Is that correct? So you've got the lightweight. This you've super won sport, super sport senior, senior. And my dad's got the soccer. Full collection. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, yeah. They are. Yeah. I've even got the classic ones. I've got the 500 and the 750 bike. Oh, I must bike. have that. <laughs> I need the 350 one. I've even got this BSA one. I'm going to try and... Try and uh, a BSA Rocket 3. That was your first one. year, wasn't it? Yeah, I, t- I, f- I tipped up, right, to come on the piss for the week. <laughs> right. Uh, I thought, oh, I've got the Manx, so I literally got a, I had a Honda Hornet. In fact, that bike in there. The one that got no, bumped. The one that got stolen, oh. I got it re- recovered back to me, right? Yeah, it's, like a, it's like a boomerang, right? <laughs> How did you get that recovered? By a mate asking the right questions or no, was no, it the police? Literally, <laughs> by, by, I got burgled. They even nicked me Dyson vacuum cleaner. Who burgles an industrial unit for a vacuum cleaner? So your brother was telling us that they're trying to nick off with a swarf bin. Oh no, that was some pikeys yesterday. <laughs> they were trying, they were trying to nick the swarf bin. But anyway, that's that's another story. But uh, <laughs> the bike got nicked half past six one morning. I'm laying in bed. Uh, gets up out of bed about quarter seven. Phone goes, hello, and uh, it's police. Oh, we've recovered your bike. I thought, oh, brilliant. Anyway, so this is is it? I went, is it knackered? I said, if it's been, if it's smashed a bit, it says. Just scrap it. I said, I'm not paying for it. No, because you've got to pay the recovery costs, aren't you? Mm-hmm. And the storage, they'll charge you. Shut up. Hold on. The police, if you get your bike pinched... If you get stolen to... and they recover it, they charge you for recovering your stolen bike. It's a separate bike. company that recovers it, but yeah. then obviously they have to be paid. It was just my, my scooter got nicked at the brand's hatch. And uh, same again. It, it got nicked, burnt out, so that you could hardly even recognise it. And I would have took it. And then I got a bill for 180 quid. And I was and, and literally it was like a rusty frame with just like melted... Plastic, every, yeah. Yeah, and I just, uh, I just said, how quid. can you prove that? It's definitely mine. And they said, uh, like, they came back with something and I just said, well, I don't think it's mine, so I'm not paying it. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's like anyway. So they did. So I got there. I had to pay. Mine were about similar sort of money. It must be like a set fee to rip you off. And uh, <laughs> I got I got there to bike, and it's got I've seen it. There, it's got purple handlebars on it. Aye. And I got that. And I thought it's my red. No, the one. Uh, it had my reg on it, right? And I thought, eh. 
somebody cut mud guard off. And I looked around and thought, hey, it's my bike, but someone had put some different handlebars on it, crash guards, a new rear tyre, right? But the bike had only been missing for two months, right? They'd been, it'd been gone ill of two months. Apparently they found it outside some blokes house in Leeds, right? And then when it went, the bike had a brand new set of tyres on it. Honest to God, I couldn't believe it. And uh, I looked at clocks and I'm like, so I've done some miles. So now you go on, whip through with stuff. I've got my old MOT certificate out. Mate. How many miles do you reckon it had done in two months? New tyres, everything like that. I'm gonna have. I'm going low. I'm hoping it's gone low. Go on. How many miles do you reckon they've stolen the bike off me out of here? Hundred mile. How many miles do you reckon they've done it in, six, in two months? Two months. Uh, Three thousand. Six. I says six mile. No, it done six thousand. All oh, right. I went, <laughs> and I'm like. Fuck off. I mean, 6,000 mile. And I'm looking at me, what is it? Looking at Speedo. It's got a new rear tyre in it. I'm like, so they'd what they're doing, and it went with new ones. So they brought the bike back, right? They changed oil and filter, put some handlebars on it, some crash guards, right? <laughs> done a lot of miles on it. And then I got it recovered. I'm like, I cannot believe it. Nobody believe it, this. How has someone done 6,000 mile? Like, you know, just the way over, it, it, it was just over two months. No, but no, but that's I mean, like three thousand like, mile a month. I'm like, where you must be drug runners, man. <laughs> must be going around world. <laughs> that's what I mean. But the way the world of Big Brother now, how the hell is it like six thousand miles worth, like on a stolen motorcycle? How is someone getting away with that? Mate, I don't know. That's Madness. Bradford. I mean, honestly, <laughs> well, they can't have been riding on Bradford. Can they? Found it in Leeds. Honestly, you can, mate. You couldn't ride it. I have like, I never got oh, more pissed off though because I never got my Dyson back. <laughs> 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 You'll be turning up at the next BSB uh, meeting. Some bloke will be here with a dice and go, uh, we, we listen to the pod yeah. and uh, there's a sore subject. Sore subject. <laughs> and um, <laughs> sorry to jump back a little bit, but do you know your your first ever TT when you turned up? What yeah. sort of oh. uh, what sort of lap time? Like, what was your fastest lap time of your first TT? One hundred and twenty-two. So I think no messing, like sort of straight in. Yeah, I think so. One hundred and twenty, one hundred twenty, something like that. Yeah. And uh, but I had no, I had an old seven hour one. I bought off eBay for four and a half grand. I did scarb on it and was, was straight down bang? Bang. Was that the one no, before? No, no, the, the one before. Bang. Cross plane. Cr- I had the one before that. Or the older one. Nice. I did that. It was a really nice bike, actually. It was a nice bike. It was good. It was all right. So that was your own bike. So this is before yeah. Paul. Sh- yeah, this, this was the X. I did my first TT in 2011. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I bought it in Bell's R6. I did just short 120 on my R6 first time there. I think 12th, I think, in Super Sport race one or two, my first time there. Then I did an R1. I bought a Flea Bay. Uh, and then I did all right, reasonable. Did the rest of the season. Then for the following year, I rode for Paul Shoesmith on the Ice Valley BMW. Do you, do you know when you first went to the TT? Did you? Did you obviously with your dad's knowledge of the place? Did he spend a lot of time with you, sort of teaching you the like where you should be going and sort of do's and don'ts? <laughs> His dad would know where the no. curbs are, being that low to the floor. <laughs> the sidecar. I went round. I did some laps in the car once, and mate, the sidecars are completely different. They oh, just God, flat I... out everywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, seventy percent of a lap, he never rolls it. They're one hundred percent, not seventy percent of a lap. It's that, like crazy. It's like there's not a lot that's transferable over. You're like yeah. I'm down a gear. <laughs> you're like flat out. You know what I mean? So <laughs> no, I just rode around myself. I just rode around the car, bodged about. That was it. Just, yeah. Have you ever been out in the sidecar with your dad? Yeah, I passenger two weeks. Got cattle. Did you? Yeah. How did you do? Uh, I did. I don't know. I just rolled in for grim death. <laughs> <laughs> is he on an LCR? No, is he? Rod Bellis. Right. Yeah, Rod right Bell, time. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it was all right. But his passenger didn't turn up on Friday, so I turned. It was like, the no, no, the weekend before Snetterton, it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the British Championship round for the F1, F2 sidecars. So I thought, ah, oh, I'm not doing it for the weekend. So I went to watch. Now, a parade in a TZ750 of Roger Bodice on the Saturday. So I thought, tipped up with the kids and the missus. Thought, take the kids and we're on there for the weekend. So much to do, you know what I mean? Anyway, I got there at dinner time. Have you got your levers with Yeah, yeah, then the van are good, go sign on. I need a passenger. for. <laughs> <laughs> so then I ended up passenger in Friday. Afternoon. That must be quite like quite a special thing though, uh, to passenger with your dad. Yeah, you know what? I, I actually quite enjoyed it. But I like I said, my dad goes, What do you reckon? Then I says, Oh, my sidecar passenger in Korea started at one o'clock Friday and ended at five. <laughs> 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 that's it, I'm done for that. I you... said, unless you're stuck, I says I'm done, I'm, that's not enough for not for me. Uh, but you'll obviously pilot the what I heard Oh driving them is brilliant. Got one, you? No, I've sold it now, I sold oh. it. But I, I did I did have one, I drove it. I, do you know what? It's so much fun. And the whole you chucked Lee Johnson off at the scenery, remember when that he bust his hand? No, it made it cut his finger. <laughs> mate, he cut his finger out and he like, fuck you know. And then we went we went we went to the ambulances like we need to go to the hospital and even the woman in the ambulance goes, Sorry, love, but we, we can't send you to the hospital without you need to go to the doctors and get a plaster. You're having us on, man. 
ask it. I'm going him up. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I did, yeah. I, were gonna, I did race that. that. The one that me and Lee rode, uh, yeah. I did actually race that later on that season, to be fair. I did all right. I did like a 39, 38 or 39 round Cadillac on it on a sidecar. Oh, dear hell. And it's F2, what you got? That's not hanging about that, is it? No, we're good. I, I really enjoy it. It's just, I ain't got time to do it all. So no. We've obviously had a shop now. I'll wait until I get older. Yeah. And then I can make sidecar things and do it myself. I'll, I mean, I will, but I just, at the minute I'm doing Still what I'm doing. That's, that's what the future holds. Yeah, yeah. I'll do it. I, I don't see why not. Hopefully, yeah, because I quite enjoy doing it. And I like the whole. I don't know. The sidecar racing's a bit different. It's a bit like a road racing paddock. Aww. Like, in, in the BSB world, it's very cutthroat, I think. You'd almost shake your hand with one hand, lift your wallet with the other. Whereas the road racing's not like that. So I don't know. Cause I, I know exactly what you mean. Got... I don't mean it disrespectfully because I think I think the British Championships you know the whole BSB. So I think it's brilliant. I really do. I think the whole competitiveness of it, the way it's run, uh, it's all more, it's like that regimental. Everything is absolutely bang on. And I do really enjoy it. And I think it's a brilliant series. But it's just different. I'm not saying it's different in a bad way. Mm-hmm. It's just different. Yeah. You know, do you know what I mean? Oh, you've, I you've, got, you've been like, oh, when you I... go to Armoria, you go to Scarborough, you get a different it's a different competitiveness there's like oh god I, I think if you go down like say the sidecar paddock I think that, like a, a nice way of saying it it's a much more sort of salt of the earth people that's how I yeah but I, you, you, you've got to be careful what you say to not be disrespectful if you know what I mean but I'm not being disrespectful because I, I like them all a good example would be you, know, you need to borrow I, something yeah. you, you go down they'll lend you it exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say simply they're friendlier people <laughs> that is 100% it they just hand things around chucking yeah. chains at each other and yeah, all sorts it's, it's, a bit, it's just different and I just I don't know it's sometimes I think you can easily forget while you started racing yeah there we are do you get what I mean? Mm. You, you, go, you go racing because you want to do it and you enjoy doing something. Like, people got me, oh, how long are you going to race at the Isle of Man for? I says, I'll stop racing the Isle of Man when I stop enjoying racing at the Isle of Man. Does that make sense? A lot of people just like, oh, I'm just going to be competitive and if I'm not winning, I'm not happy at all. I said, no, I, I want to win as much as the next man. Like, we all want to win, don't we? Do you know what I mean? And I like being competitive, but I still enjoy riding my bike because mm-hmm. if I didn't, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. What? So at what point, you know, when after you... You rode for Paul Shoe Smith. You, had, you know, you did your own R one. You've won TTs and stuff like that. The, the, that the BMW were quite good, actually. The potential of that bike was massive. That but was I the never, Gen three, not even the Gen three. Was I don't. It, it was twenty twelve model. It was new was in twenty twelve. That, 2012, that was model. That a two, I, then? I don't know. Probably yeah, Gen two. I think. Gen yeah, two. I think so. I don't know. But it, I thought it was really good. I quite liked the bike. The, mm-hmm. the BMW were nice. Uh, but uh, the, the year the senior got cancelled because I did one hundred and twenty six in the superbike, and then the senior got cancelled in 2012. I finished ninth, I think, in the Superbike race, them second year there. Oh, and then cool. it got cancelled in the senior, because I was like, I was all pumped, but anyway. Mm-hmm. So at what point did it take a professional turn for you? You know, uh, when I went to go race for RCX Prosper, because we did so much racing. Yeah. You, you physically, how can you go to work and, ra- like you said earlier, when you're going and doing all these meetings, to have time off is almost impossible. Mm-hmm. No, but no boss is going to turn around and say to you, oh, yeah, mate, just have, have, have summer off. I'll see you in October. Aye, I know what you're saying. It, it just, it's not going to happen, is it? It's like when you, you see all the lads at BSB, people must be working flexi time. If not, you can't turn up Wednesday or Thursday, 12 rounds a year, mm-hmm. have a fortnight in space. You, know what I mean? you can't, it's impossible to do. I tell you what blew my mind. You know, when we went to Alton Park, the signing on thing was Thursday morning. You know, for the riders. Yeah, see, exactly. And I fucking, I, ra- I rang him, Nyon and Tia, going, what do you mean Thursday f- morning? I've, I've booked Friday off. Yeah, no, you that, know, like, they, I'm there for free Thursday night. Yeah. And I'm like, no, but one of this uh, Thursday morning, I'm going, I've got a unit, was I? I, wait, one o'clock, Yeah, well, my, yeah well, mine was Thursday wrong, because I had pitches to do and stuff. But they mm-hmm. said, the, the, the see, if you're a super bike rider, though, you're almost a professional, so you, sh- you should be there. Mm-hmm. Which, I get that, because these are so low, but the problem is, is the, is the money in it? Hmm? Like you, you're a super stock thousand champion, right? And you, you don't get paid to race a motorbike. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? But it's it like it, to say to win a to, for somebody to win a national super stock champion that is hard work. Right? God, I hundred percent. Right? And then you turn up and it's like the next year, and it's just you, you, it costs you to go racing still because you've still got to put your diesel in your van to get there. How many paid riders do you think there are? Like being in an open, I think there's only Jesus. There's only going to be four or five, isn't it? Nah, there's be, bikes, no, you know be more, there'll super... be more than that. There's more than that, isn't there? I love the super super bike grid, but I yeah, think it's one. it's different. Because I didn't you get to... cut, well, like you would like to me almost. I think doing like in world championship, if you win the super sport, yeah, you get a super bike. S- they always they always go a step up. Why why didn't you get offered a super bike ride? 
No, no. I've, I, I was on the phone a lot to, to like trying to get a super. You were chasing. Like, yeah, there was no. There was no. Um... That's. I think there's a link there missing that almost needs engineering in somehow that if you do win the Superstar Championship, you get the opportunity to go on a oh, super bike. Carried, I. Yeah. Because I, I think like like yourself, I, I feel like not that you've missed out. Yeah. But you have. Well, <laughs> do you yeah, know what I mean? No, I don't I mean that. Mean. I don't want to be disrespectful too, because I, I respect what you've done. I think's really good. Honestly, yeah. I really do. I think it's brilliant. And I just think I almost think you get a bit shortchanged. I, I know exactly what do you know, mean, but we'll, yeah. I think because we have spoke about this before as well. The the sort of the sport. You have done bags. You rode that Mavuno one, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I saw you a few sort. times laid in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, the sport in general has gone very much more like car racing, and I think at the end of the day, this because there's there a massive because there's Money. A, exactly. Because uh, people want to do it, yeah. The the balance of power in terms of so like a lot like for example, a lot of people would race bikes for free because it's because like they, doing it. yeah because they enjoy doing it. So if the from a team's point of view, it's kind of like supply and demand. If there was nobody willing to do it for free, then teams would have to pay certain riders. But the fact is. Like if you were a superbike boss now, and you you had your pick, and you had like somebody who's really really good rider who's happy to do it for free, it then all the other people that would want something out of it, it sort of gets rid of that basically. And if if you've got a load of fast people that are willing to say bring say fifth, I remember uh, Lee Johnson had a thing either on YouTube or Twitter or whatever at the beginning of this year. If you've got people who are capable of winning super sport races that are willing to bring. 30 40 50 thousand how on earth like it, Can you it's basically it, it basically takes a lot of people out of a it dialogues what, what, the job what would be a job yeah. yeah um but at the end of the day from my point of view i've r- racing's not a full-time job and i feel like for me i can um you know it's like you like, can switch uh, off. My, uh, well uh, away from racing yeah. i can sort of have a normal job and sort of earn a living so therefore for me, race. If I could race the rest of my life, and um, and do it like if I can just race, that's all all I'm after. So like, I don't really. I know what you're saying. Obviously, it would be nice to earn earn a few quid. No, nice for the opportunity. Yeah, it would be obviously. I'm not about the money side of things. I mean, for you to just have an opportunity to have a go. Yeah. The silicon got a spare the, bike. I mean, I'm riding <laughs> the old bike still. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, when you get a new one, any chance you can put him on? <laughs> it's all right. It's good to buy. I've got my bike's good. My bike's not bad. I'm on good stuff. I was about to say your Kawasaki affair would have started with RC Express, and, and yeah, did you yeah, never... back in 2014. 14. No, in fact, it didn't. It started the back end of 2012. When I raced for Shuey, I believe it or not, I had to pay. That, this is this is what I was talking about. I, you know that turn I, of the professionalism. Yeah, I, I had to yeah. pay to ride that bike. I paid to ride the Ice Valley bike. You don't mind? How how much was that at the time then? Uh, to do the t- well, I, I, you know what? I can't even remember. I I, t- I basically I did a deal right where it only fought the Northwest and the TT because my first ever Northwest was in 2012 with the Ice Valley team. Right. Oh my God, that where I I had an eye opener because it was like. Yeah, you knew it. And I'd, li- I'd never rode the bike either. The first time I rode the bike, I did a Scarborough on it, right? But it was stuck in rain mode. They had like these modes back then, rain, yeah. intermediate. They're, like everyone thought it was the coolest Hair thing in the world. Fire if there was ever a fault, wet mode. <laughs> 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 anyway, there was some fault of it, so it was stuck in wet mode. So I literally did a few at Scarborough and pulled links, it wouldn't go. So like my first time on it was at the Northwest. Now that was an eye Jesus. <laughs> Wait, so how, did, how, did you, how did you get on? Uh... I, d- I didn't do very well to be honest. I think I were top ten, but I was like, I just didn't. I I've just, my mind was blown. I was like, this is fucking horrendous. You know what I mean? I was like, I didn't know what was going on. The six hundred were fine, and the whole. And that was on the Ian Bell bike cell. Yeah, well, on the Ian Bell R six and the Ice Valley BM. Yeah. yeah, and then I did the Northwest and the TT for him. I had a good TT, and then a Roy uh, R six Express uh, and Ben. They helped me out with a ZX ten for the Southern. That year, because I was going to do it with Ice Valley, but he asked for more money. Right. Right. Now, like, I mean, I were a car mechanic. I don't have any. I don't have any money to start putting thousands of pounds into a team. Do you know what I mean? Fortunately, I lived at home with my mum and dad, so I didn't have all that, any bills to pay. Do you know what I mean? But I'm like, I can't afford to do that. So, all right. But anyway, Roy got, bought me his ZX10. 
And they they lit, now RC Express, you you lot developed that team together and got it to where it is now. Is that not a fair? Yeah, no, comment? it is. Yeah, it's and a good it, team. I so, still get along with really well now. They're, they're really nice people. The whole oh, team, unbe- I, unbelievable. You've given, rode for them. Oh, that's what I mean. They've yeah, given yeah. opportunities. They're, they're a huge part of the road racing paddock. Huge yeah, if part. they went, I think they'd be missed massively. I, I could not agree more. I do could also. not agree more. So, but like, was it literally just Roy came out the? Yeah, I, I, Roy, Roy, Hello, I'm, you know, Roy I met with Roy after the Isle of Man and he says, what what do you need? I says, well, I won't mind a stock there for to do like the, the general road racing on real. I said, oh, no, so he, he bought us ZX10. I built it in my garage at home. As well, now, did you pick a ZX? Like, so why why the car was at your route at that point, if you know what I mean? Was it just a fancy one of those? Because uh, you've been on a BM, you, you, you went... Do you, then... do you know what? I don't know. Right. I don't know why I chose a Kawasaki. Why, why did I? How old? How many years ago? This twenty. What year are we in now? Twenty-one. You in blue levers, white helmet, L plate, knee sliders, city no, boots. No, I had black levers on. I had some black, black levers. Le- BKS. Yeah, did BKS. You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, they were good levers. Mate, they were comfy. Because you've been with Sparta for since God was a lad now. Yeah, you? I've I've, sho- <laughs> I, I've only ever worn a shoey helmet. Yeah, <laughs> shoe is the only helmet I've ever worn. Uh, but no, I did. I did. I rode that. That were good. That. I went to the I think it's fourth at the Southern on it first time. It was like the old state, you went you went I did the, I was the first ever newcomer to do hundred over hundred and thirty mile That's, an hour. You see what I mean? Uh, the average note the Ulster on the next end. And I still had the key in it. It do 186 flat out because still a limit on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? that really, that's how green I was. I literally turned up in a van with a bike and I borrowed a pop up of Billy. And I were like there were me and a lad called Sam. Uh and that were it. And they were like the best days though. Because there was no pressure, nobody cared. I just I slept in back of the van on the floor. It just didn't matter, did it? You just turned up with a bike, rode your bike around, had a laugh on that one. It was just it was just a different Nobody does that now. You don't see it happening now, which is can, quite no, sad. No, you know, can you do that now? To be like to be banging around at those speeds at the in But, the but top I did 10. do it. No, no, I know you did it, but do you think hindsight's a wonderful thing? And I thing, knew no but, you know what the no, difference is. I'm I didn't know any different. I didn't know any different, but not many people are doing that now. It's no. like, you know, the infrastructure, the bikes, everything. It just seems so. Now, when everyone wants to put up. on Facebook first. I didn't even have Facebook. Everyone likes to look what I'm doing. I'm on Facebook. Look at me. I'm like, I just want to ride my bike. Mm. That was it. I just rode around, went home, didn't care where I finished, just went as fast as I could. That was it. I finished third, I think, at the Ulster on it. And when you say That's what about, I mean. Like, what you. Did you enjoy those times more? Mate, they were the best, weren't they? Yeah. No stress, no pressure. I had no responsibilities in life. Where now I've got Mrs. Two Kids, mortgage, house. It's like, fucking you know, you know I mean? all the stress of that. And mm-hmm. then you're doing <laughs> race as well, <clears throat> which is hard enough at the best of times. You know I mean, you, you know yourself. And then it all just spiralled out of control. Now, what's the thing now? It's like with the road, it gets expected of you. That's why now, I'm, tr- I'm trying to get quick at the short circuit at the minute. And it's not expected of me, but it should be. I feel like, and myself, I should be better at that. And it's the summer I'm, the link I'm missing at the minute, why I'm not slightly, I'm not a million mile away. No, that's the thing. I'm, we, I, I'm just nearly there. And at the beginning of the pod, we were talking about that. Like, you've, you've jumped seconds in this game. Yeah, I am. I'm, you know, I'll that, struggle that, We're talking seconds at yeah. this level. You're talking millisecond. You know, you, I know. So you, well, like, year round. Like, for so, example, uh, Donington, for example, I'm talking perfect dry weather. I'm, I'm about four tenths off, sort of. Been between eighth and fourteenth, that area, or like a group of them riders. I know four tenths is a lot, but that's achievable. Yeah. If it were a one point four, it's not achievable. Yeah. But four tenths is, I think, mm-hmm. and that's what I need to be consistently faster. I think, and it's it's just frustrating sometimes. Now, I think I try to add. I end up going slower sometimes, and I think. That's uh, what I was going to ask. It's like how how out the skin are you doing that? You know, to make that jump. You guys, like I just said, you go as fast as you can. I was try- I'm trying my best every time I go and try. Everybody does. I think if I say they're not, they're lying. But I think yeah. y- y- guidance is a bit of a thing. Do you then who, who do you help? Who helps you, for example? Uh, I've got a few people, uh, but I've got a <laughs> uh, like a coach, Alan Carter. Right. And he he helps us. They I just do me on. I've done. Uh, yeah. Also another thing. Yeah, but you do, are. Do, do, you have, do you have like data a data logging on your bike? Oh come you on! Can... I've got more ticket. Bob does all. I've got a data engineer. Bob does all that. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> that, that I'm not, not that basic. <laughs> Fuck you. No, I was I was about to say to reference. Have you got like other like people that have say done a four tenth lap faster, so you can like look at exactly where you're losing? Uh, no. See that that's like priceless. Because you're saying you've got four tenths to find, but then if you've got a lap that's four tenths faster on the data, you can see 
exactly oh, i'm breaking slightly earlier there i'm not breaking as hard there the front ends are you can see it on the data so yeah you, no i don't well, i must say i'm on one man in the that's team. what i'm saying you know, that's, that's a disadvantage no of not having a, a either that data or having a teammate and i think yeah. um hickman mentioned that a while ago like no, no matter who hickman's teammates have been recent uh, over the last like sort of while he's been at smith's and then fho yeah he's he's never really had a teammate to like Reference off Bounced to off. reference off. He's they've always referenced off him, um, yeah. and like. Well, it's like this year's the same though. Cause Pete's obviously everywhere Pete's gone, he's been on the on fire, hasn't it? This year's been riding really well. He's, he's stepped and, up another oh, level again. Yeah, he's massively as you. And I, yeah, I think he's going really well. I, I think it's good. And he because he's quite like Forrest. He won. He finished what he won that much faster than me at Cadwell. Really, mm-hmm. he was only a bit in front of me, and like so he he can't reference off him because yeah. he's so much faster. Just. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't know far as I've never met the man nothing like that it's a nice look it's a nice look it just you know what from the outside looking in you know his mannerisms are, like I say I don't know him personally he just doesn't seem too bothered from the outside I that's, think that's he my should opinion, have got mine. the factory Ducati ride when he was riding yeah. that Barnet Ducati he were poured him in the Barnet Ducati wasn't it, was it? Exactly. he should have gone I think I think he should have had a shoot in the factory team but he never did he almost got Went elsewhere and rode a Kawasaki he was the, and it was, that, that year he was the highest uh, private, like non-factory team a non-factory rider in World Tutor Bikes. Exactly. He, he's been back to BSB and then he did a good job last year in World Tutor Bikes. But uh, yeah, for some reason it just hasn't clicked for him this year. I know no. he, he broke a skate fight at the, like... Not Elton Park. Park. Yeah, did you? Which, that's got to knock you. But, but, yeah, then, but then he went from there to... He, went, he missed out uh, Rock he went Hill, and, then, and then he went straight over to do a, an endurance race. Yeah, he did a 12-hour endurance. Did, did well there, uh, yeah. Didn't they get on the podium? Yes. There we are. Yeah, <laughs> that's a fair point. Yeah, no, that's how you go, <laughs> doesn't seem to have clicked. Um, just so we started the with uh, the TT and then RC Expressos. What was your first podium like in international road racing? Ah, uh, international. Well, like this is a TT Northwest also. My first TT podium also. was on a twin. I think was on a twin. It'll have been on a twin. It has to be. Oh, well, Stuart Smith on there. Yeah. That's TT, but then. Can you honestly surely not, would have been the other honestly not remember Didn't the first TT no. podium no. Southern well you've been banging around the Southern Jesus wept you've... Mate, I, 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 I've had that many bangs on the head I've, I, I, it all just blows it? into one <laughs> yeah, it, does, well, yeah. it might be an easier one then what was your first win at the TT oh that way twin that was easy that's an easy one I remember your first win no, twin was my first one uh, do you know what the one the, the, when I did alright I finished second on a super stock bike in 2014 Jesus. In stock thou. And that never got mentioned. And I thought, I finished second in a stock thou. Jesus. Yeah, and to do that was hard. Michael won, I was second, and Bruce Anstey were third. Bruce, right. I talk, Bruce Anstey. Right, and, I, and, I, and no one, that never got mentioned that. Mm-hmm. And I thought, and, and I was like, why? You know, like, so far, and I thought, nobody ever says that. Nobody ever notices that. And I think that one, that's like, that's, I had no quick shift either. Quick shift didn't work off start. You ride a thousand with no quick shift from Island Man for four laps, mate. That was hard work. My hands were, full, I mean, I was like, Pfft. I was just, I think you've answered me next question. What has been your biggest standout moment? Is that it? No, it's not mine. Hey, no, 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 it's no, not. What, no, what? but it's just in, in my head, right? I'll never forget that. Because the weather conditions were a bit shitty. It was a bit damp and greasy and it was wet under the, not wet, but no, it's damp under the trees and things like that. And you just look like, <sighs> yeah, I had no quick shift. And it was a hard, no, you were a hard race. And you think this is hard. And the only reason why I carried on is because I got like P2 on my board. Mm-hmm. But like the first few seconds, I thought, fucking hell, I thought I'd carry on here. No, it, it was just hard work. And you get off afterwards, your hand's falling off, you know what I mean? But I, it's just that we're back in 2014. Yeah. I'll and never forget that. What's been your standout, like your standout moment in your eyes? Uh, we're not talking like great, like like stuff like that, you know? Like, that, silly little uh, things. Yeah, like. Do you know what? Do you know what I, I quite, I had a racing around the Ulster. I have a lot of quite a good fun around there. I had loads of there some good races around there. I had a good race with Dan Neen in twenty. Jesus, that was outstanding. He was on the Cookstown bike. You were on the Mar was that Marjorie? No, 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 mate, no. I, the, the, that no. It was when he won Tycos. I won the Superbike race in twenty. That was it. Eighteen. I don't know what year it was. I don't. I lose track of years. When you get that old, you see you lose track of years <laughs> and days old, you're, and things like that. You're not like old, son. You're just being I fucking forgetful. No, I've just done stopping. a lot of stuff. Yeah, when you do that much stuff, yeah. In twenty eighteen, I had a right good race with Dan, and he was leading, I was leading, all the rest of it. And that that was good. That was a good race. And that's like your, like your standout moment. Yeah, just, just it was just a good race. Do you know what I mean? Cause Dan were good. Uh, it was Dan hard was rider. Jesus, yeah, it was hard. Yeah. But no, I've had loads of little standout things. The Southern's been good for me racing. That was another good race with Dan again. There were me, Dan, and Michael at the Southern in twenty. 
eight, it might have been 17 or 18 when I won my first solo championship race. And back at the Southern then, it was like that. the times were that tight between so many people. And you're literally racing around there like a short circuit, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And you, you're really trying. And I had loads of bad luck all week. I had like a regular rectifier going one race. Then I went out in the second race. Because the regular rectifier had gone, it corrupted the ECU because the battery voltage had gone low and then I'd know what would work. And it like, fucking hell, you know what I mean? And then eventually for the main race, the bike got sorted. And I'd won every single race previously on different years apart from that one solo championship race. And that was the race that I won that week. Yeah. And I, well, me and the lads all went on the beer after. Oh, my God. <laughs> do, do you know from when you when you stepped up and just got to like say 130 mile an hour lap and that's like a big i remember milestone. doing my first 130 that was 2014 as well i run i run i was actually i were on michael rutter's 2013 superbike right. roy at rc express had bought uh, mss just kawasaki from them to do the roads on and it was rutter's old bike uh it was rutter's old buckens because they rode for him back a superbike back then mm-hmm. and uh i did i was lying fourth in the senior uh back then and it blew up coming into Sulby Bridge it broke a gear and put it out of the back of the crankcases but on the previous lap I did my first 130 mile an hour lap oh my yeah. god and I'm, I'm begging I, I'll never I, forget I, that because I, I stopped right at Ginger Hall it was great and George Peach was sat there watching the race who runs the Southern and he gives me 20 quid because there's a bar on the corner Fuck, racing's finished now last race today the bike's blown up I was pissed off don't get around but I thought end it I don't get pissed off if you break down it could be a lot worse I always look at the outside looking there's people in a lot worse situation than me I'm fine the bike's there it'll repair there's a pub there he's giving me 20 quid right? it's on <laughs> it's on <laughs> right? there's no more racing for the rest of the week anyway so I went in the, I went in this boozer right I had a gallon of, it was only the second lap it brought down so I had a good over over an hour and 45 so I'm there oh for my hours. god mate I had a gallon of bitter right in this in, in Ginger Hall pub, right? And I never spent a penny. And on the way back out, I remember giving you George's 20 quid back, right? <laughs> and I was that pissed, right? Because I just got off the bike and I was sweating, right? And then you start drinking beer straight away. Uh, I got. I had to wait for the recovery van, which I had to wait for the race to finish, which went on for ages. I got in the recovery van on the way back, fell asleep on the way back in the van, got back to woke up when I got to Governor's Bridge. The track get dragged back, but I was that pissed, I couldn't get the bike out. <laughs> Right, so I just ended up waddling <laughs> off and left with the team. That was funny, that was funny. I remember what, forget that. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say, do you know, from, from around that sort of 130 to 132, that, that was kind of like the benchmark for a good number of years. Yeah, well, I did and 133, then... I think I have on a stocker now. Right, well, I was going to say, and then that. there was that jump from, from like, just past 130, and then, the, like, 133, 134s. Yeah. Um, is there like is there noticeable differences where like for example yes is all you've always like rolled at a particular point but then you've thought ah fucking just held it flat what what's the differences between the sort of one thirty twos and one thirty fours stupid <laughs> <laughs> is anyone in particular on the lap that's like you're, no, you're, you're asking a little bit more out yeah of. you know it's probably what just one place though it's like when you do a fast lap time around Alton Park no matter where you are it's just a little bit everywhere because you're, you're nicking bits because you're going for the difference is right the Isle of Man there's 264 corners in a lap yeah what, there's, what is the 12 round a short circuit where, for example sake you nick a little bit around 12 you've got a little bit you nick a bit around 200 you've got a big bit mm. <laughs> do you get what I mean it's, it's literally like that you've got to nick a bit everywhere you can I think because you've got so many opportunities to do so mm-hmm. I don't know how else to explain it what, what's the do you know what I mean? what's the you know when you get back after a race and you find yeah. out what lap time is, what's the biggest sort of buzz that like when someone's set a lap time and you've thought yes like what's be- been the biggest sort of was it the 130 no i went out in practice in 2018 but i was steady away and i was like you, you, you know you're going fast but you're smooth and you're happy and you're just like doo, 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 and you just point to point i did like 133 summer that fucks me right off that <laughs> right there <laughs> you know I mean? and i did I'm like, and paul goes even 133.6 i says what are? i says all oh, right yeah. I went yeah they say everyone says everyone says that you know like, win, like remember when Lee, like Lee won the Super Sport came in and it didn't feel like a win you know is that is that the one with, oh that was the oh that was funny that race it got cut short to two, two laps, laps. So it was a two anyway lap dash, I right? pulled in at pit lane I didn't I didn't realize I cut it out of two laps right I put I, stu- I I came out of Governor's Bridge obviously I wasn't in the, the mix anyway I was like fourth or something actually uh, but I came down pit lane and pulled into the pits and he's got the chequered flag out I'm thinking what the hell's happening what's here? going on here and then it's all it's been cut to two laps so I slammed I, I slowed it off oh, I didn't even know how would I know when you're on the bike no one gives you a ring do they or no one comes on dash two laps <laughs> you know what I mean Jeez. it was quite funny and you just mentioned Paul was so Paul Aiden yeah how uh, um i only met paul a few weeks ago obviously i've known christian for a while but i've only met paul yeah um, what was he like to work with 
I like Paul. He was, he was a Paul Raw, right? It seems like a sort of top. Yeah, he was really massively chilled out. He was really chilled out with Paul, but I call him Mr. Laid Back. Uh, but no, it was good. The, the, the whole That's rich the, come from you because you're really laid back. No, so that must be very, on, yeah. there, yeah. But no, I, I did. I, I always got along with Paul, but no, no gripes or all that. It was just one of them things, just chilled out. We did, did his thing. He knew what he had to do. I know what I had to do. We just went about his thing. And we all, I think we all got along, to be honest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, brilliant. And uh, just before we move on from the the sort of TT stuff, the the very last time we went to the TT in two thousand nineteen, it's almost two years. Is it past two years now? Or yeah, it's, yeah. two TTs like, gone. Two, yeah, two, yeah, two TTs, TTs are gone. Are gone. Um, well, I presume that's been the your most successful, your best TT to date. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, talk us through the the senior TT win. The was that. I presume as a TT rider, that must be the pinnacle that you're oh, aiming for. Yeah, your exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, was when you when you finally crossed the line and seen the checkered flag and went down the the slip yeah, well, road. Me and Pete obviously been close for years, but in that he got quite a bit of a gap. I think about eighteen seconds, seventeen seconds, something like that. Yeah. And then he had a bit of an issue, and he, as soon as it came back, like P one plus twenty six or something. I thought, eh, I thought, oh, what's happened? Where did he get that board? He won like like three or something, or like four. Uh, and I'm like, oh, whereabouts? Uh, I have a board, me, at... No, I just have to Balaf on the left. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of one there from Glenelg. I have one at Sulby Bridge on the right from Balaf. Then I have one at the Bungalow from Ramsey. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a few boards. I only get the one at the Gooseneck. Right, yeah, no, I have like three pit boards. Some people have more, but four or five. You can, yes, you know. Jesus. Yeah, you can, yes, I have three boards. And, and you step the game. And sometimes you get other people putting them out for you and things. You, I, know, you do get that. It's just, that's the thing. If you get, you do get people, which yeah, is good, look, actually. I, I look behind us. I'm thinking, who the hell's behind I'm thinking, who's caught us? You know, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, a pit so, board no. out. You're like, who the fuck's near? Like, yeah, no, <laughs> you, you do you do get a bit of that. But no, and it would then, it, sorry, it would then, it would just like, when you've got, I had a reasonable lead and you just. You still got to go fast because you're going so fast anyway, and it's just like try, try to keep concentration back to the line, really. Mm-hmm. But it's like a weight off your shoulders. Did the thing that I were happy about, I've won in every class, like you've says. Some people get specialists, so he's really good on that, and he's really good on that. Like you get super stock, the same. You get somebody that can ride a super stock bike, unbelievable. They get on a super bike and they struggle a lot more than you'd almost think that they would because mm-hmm. they're so talented on a super stock bike. And 600's the same. You get somebody that can really ride a 600 that struggles on a super bike. Whereas for me to win every class, I think it's an achievement for me because it's... If you were going to drop one class, what would you drop? Twin. Twin. Yeah, because I've, when you've won some already, and I prefer riding the bigger bikes. I, I love the big bike, you know, the super bike. I like riding the big bike. Mm-hmm. That's it, really. And um, would talking just before the podcast started about the um, the f- sort of misconception that people have about uh, how much money's at the uh, in, in road racing and yeah. we were saying about um you did take his rolex off before coming in <laughs> so I people, yeah, I, people, people, have this, people have the, I've got the height of clothing on the, but for, for, <laughs> plug in your own business Go for on, people that don't understand don't understand how it works am i right in saying at the tt you get uh, paid for laps led not just the finish yes that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. Of, um, well, I'm sure we had someone on the podcast that said something about the first time they went to the TT. Every time they got like near the finish, or no, no somewhere uh, north in 2018, I right? I did hundred. I did the first. I did 134 four from a standing start in the superbike race, and I led the race for two or three laps, and the clutch went right. And I thought I was spewing because I had an 18 second lead, right? And I would third lap, good lead, everything was going well, and I got lap money. Because I led for two laps. Yeah. So How much is that then? I don't know what it was. I can't remember what it was, but I didn't realise. Like, oh, you got it. Which is good, really, because yeah, to say you've busted your bollocks <laughs> for two laps, right? <laughs> so at least it's not all for all, but you're not going to retire on it, are you? Yeah. I'm not going to. Uh... I'm not gonna, yeah. No. I think for what is it? Well, I think everyone knows the prize money anyway, don't I think for winning the seniors, 18 grand, I think. Is that without lap bonus or is that? No, that's all in all, I think. About that's 18 all in grand. Also, if you year. win every lap, if you lead yeah, every, every lap. Yeah, about win. 18 grand, yeah. Uh-huh. Aye. So you're not going to retire, are you? No. So, so I mean, and and if you look at there's how many people have won a senior? That's what I mean. That's just there's huge. not a massive amount of people. How many people have won round the mountain course? Never mind won a senior TT. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. just so it's got, just phenomenal. Do you, do you keep your uh, senior TT trophy in a like? Is that right? If in you the says of the to, if you says to me now, where's my trophy? I'd tell you, I don't know. Wait, are the lads just hiding them around the house or something? Or was Vicky I, I, tripping I about the window? I don't have. I do not. Are you not sort of precious about them? 
No. Really? I just dotted about the house in random places with other ones and just... I, I had this vision that, you know, because you're the only family that have got the full collection, I thought yeah. you would go in and you would have, like, a shrine to them and, like, nah. just no, you ever not you. Have you given any replicas no. away? Me? Yeah. Why? To, like, sponsors and stuff like that, you know, if you never... Just what... Why well, no? I just keep them all. I keep them and put them in shoe boxes and stuff. And I've only ever given. Back. I've only ever given three away. Right. And they were like prop, like I. You know, I've got a few. I, I think I've got seven now. No, the you get the big ones when you win, don't you? you yeah. Know. So you got seven. Oh, is that seven including the, the classics? The same trophy, aren't they? Yeah, the exact same trophy. Yeah, I, mate, to win mad. a classic's hard. Mm-hmm. Mate, Jesus Christ, winning one of them's as hard as opening it, riding a gold classic right around there, you're vibrating your hands for handlebars and all sorts. <laughs> you're still pushing, aren't you? But yeah, they're good fun though. I quite like the classic. Yeah. It's a shame that's all. I would upset that one on this year, really. It's a shame we couldn't get over I just have a, have a raw round, but hopefully touch wood, it'll all be back on next year. So yes. let's talk about big changes coming up then. Uh, Metzlers to Dunlops. You won the Dunlop Senior TT on Metzlers, yeah, which is just, yeah, that was a marketing thing that kind of <laughs> went wrong on that side of things. So yeah. what's, what's inspired the change? I don't think a change is as good as a rest, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? When you look at who's... That's like, very deep, I like that. For example, look at the top ten and look what everyone's on. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with any of the tyres. They're all good tyres, aren't they? Yeah. It's just what what you're going to get the edge out of, I, I don't know. But mm. unless you try them, you don't know, do you? Have you I ain't have fallen you... out of anybody. I could. I mean, you don't oh, no, fall no, out. You don't, oh, no, 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 no. The game's too no, small to be falling yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. No, so, it... no, it's, it'd be an interesting test to see how they do go around there and they obviously yeah. do go around next to the fastest tyre because right? you're going to like the thing is like a Dunlop's like known for you know the heating up like a Pirelli and like Metz's kind of thing you can just hit the ground running and go but I tell you what you're blowing that clean out the water at um, what do you call it Oliver's Mount you know what I mean? It's a very short, tight, nadry track. You're just straight out on the knee and off you go. You know, you're not. You're no, not I, well, I got a lap record around there in Dunlops. There we are. So, not too bad. See, they worked there, didn't they? They the, worked the, around no, there. Oh, no, no, we're not, we're not disputing the fact that they don't not work. No, they do work. I, but I know what you mean. They do, they do take a bit to come to in comparison. Can you feel that? Uh, yeah, of course you do. Yeah, you've got to be slightly more cautious for <laughs> the first few laps once they get the temperature in and then they'll almost come to you and you get your feel. Yeah. Uh, but my, I do have a concern, obviously, about that in the Isle of Man. Is it going to be something that's going to take a But normally I'm good off the start. Uh, but then again, is that because your tyre works better from the start? Uh where the Dunlop might take a little few miles to come yeah. to me then progressively. I, I don't know, because I ain't, be, ain't run them yet. Yeah. I did, back in 2012, I ran them. I had Dunlops my first time there. In 20, uh, actually, I used to run Dunlops then. Yeah. 2012, 2011, I had Dunlops. I didn't switch to Metz until 2013. Have you what? ever tried any other ma- manufacturers of tyres? There isn't anything Isle of Man. There's only Metzler or, there's, or Pirelli Metzler or Dunlop, that's it. There's no, but, you could put Michelin on, I suppose, but there's no support. You, the thing is, the actual truck's there ready to, for you to use them. You need sort of backup with them, and if there's any issues, and all like that, because it's quite, yeah. You know what I mean, don't you? It's like, whereas yeah. like BSB, for example, everyone just has to run one tire, and that's it. That, so it's easy, isn't it? Controlled, that's controlled your tire, that's it, crack off. Yeah. There's no arguing. Which I, I sort of agree with, but I don't. In what sense? Because for tire development, it's crap. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right, but then again, we're not there to develop tyres. Are you that risk? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. and then does that mean it, it, so? Oh, no, it's God a I bit. Ain't. It's a bit. It's one of them, isn't it? I don't. I don't know. It's mad, isn't it? Well, like when you look at other series, is but they're all one make out Motor GP. Everyone wins Michelin. Yeah, one good thing about so it. So I think it is the way forward to make it a level playing field. Do you reckon well, Michelin's well, will come good in a few years? Then, if you're like, being the, like you know when you talk about that tyre technology drifting uh, down. You know, the kind of thing. You know, you're saying you know it's all about pushing it. Everyone knows that Michelin, Dunlop, Pirelli, Metzler, Bridgestone, they all know how to make a tyre. Exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. Do you know I mean, it's like the Japanese riders that ride for Honda. They've always been on Bridgestones, I think, and now they're yeah. on Pirelli's. That must be a big transition for them. Mm-hmm. Do you know, for them to come and get on the Honda and ride in a different tyre, I think that's that might not hinder them, but it'll take a bit of getting... Well, they've done enough rounds now to get used to it, but, you know, that'll have been a big thing for them. Oh, yeah, so have I. Um, on, the, on the TT course, what's your favourite section and what's your least favourite section? Uh, I like the run to the Glen Ellen through the whole Glen Ellen section, all that when you're under the trees. You have that lap record, don't you? Not lap record, sorry. I have sector, se- sectors sector record, from start it. line to Glen Ellen, Glen Ellen to Ramsey and... He's got the one, Peter's got the one from Ram, is it Balaf onwards, I think. Uh, have you, here's a, sorry, here's a random question. Have you ever fancied going on a different brand of bike, just to say that you've done it? Has that ever tickled your fancy? Yeah, of course it has, yeah. You, you, you do think that sometimes. Yeah. Whether you suit different bikes, do you know yeah. what I mean? For example, the perfect example of that, for example, do you remember when Haslam won the championship, what year did he win the championship? On Talking short circuit, yeah. Kawasaki 2000. Yes. 
18. Well, 18, you want it? it yeah, yes. let's say yeah, it was 18. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Haslam won the championship in 18, and that's the next 10. The following year, Glenn signs for him. <laughs> Couldn't ride the bike. Mm. Glenn can clearly ride a bike, because look yeah. how well he's going now on a Honda. Yeah. Look how well he's going on a Ducati. He knows how to ride a motorbike. He got on the Kawasaki. Did not Could sell. not ride the motorbike. No matter what he did, it just didn't suit him as a rider. Mm -hmm. And you think sometimes, I think I'm... Obviously, the Kawasaki it must suit me to a certain extent because obviously I've won racing. But the road racing is different to the short circuit. I almost think sometimes it would be interesting to try another bike. Mm -hmm. No, to have yeah. another go on another one. I really would like to say, but it's you can't just go, oh, well, I'll just go test that suit yeah. bike. You can't just do that, can you? <laughs> it, but look you know, at you. You won the championship last year in a BMW. You're on, and where are you lying now in a Kawasaki? A seventh at the moment. There's did a you, lot. Did you just hear a pin drop? <laughs> there's a lot of I think, I think it's some uh, your brother's dropped something in the engineering workshop yes, so there you are well, that's, <laughs> perfect, that's a perfect example isn't it Pindrop. what do you think's a better bike um, what did you prefer your BM or your Kawasaki bearing not, in mind nothing like putting us on the spot but <laughs> yeah obviously I had bearing a lot more mind, success on the BM bearing in mind you were on the old BM mm, yeah, I, not yeah the, not, not, not the end you're, not, you're not on the new BM with the wings Yes, that's right. Which is yeah. different again. I know. We're just talking about that earlier. And, it's not well. every, and nobody said a bad thing. Everyone said a positive thing. Mm -hmm. We're just so, chatting before as well about you know, the carbon wheels on the new one. Yeah. Oh, and the fact geez. you've got to run them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, a, what are they, like four grand a set or something? I, I don't know. I don't know. You'll get a deal in them, so I'm sure I'll sell some of them. Four grand a set, two grand a week. I, Jesus, web, that's just, it's it's a lot the of money. Yeah. The pricing out of this market is phenomenal. And that, that almost refers back to my question. You, you know, when you first started off, there's a fact that you, proper old school Joey Dunlop, turned up in the van, off you went, got out in top tens. Now you're talking about buying a bike. That is four grand for a set of I wheels. I give four just, and a half geez. grand for my first thousand cc racing that, bike, and that came with a spare set of wheels. <laughs> that, that, that's what I'm saying. You know and what I mean? You're paying four grand for a set of wheels. Mental. It's just crazy. That's exactly. It's just, it's just the the price. Everything's gone up on it. It's just mm -hmm. crazy. Ridiculous. I do. That's ridiculous. But anyway, we never got your question out of you about yeah, your BM and your Kawasaki. So I, I've. Um, <laughs> I was more comfortable on the on the BMW last year. Obviously, and that obviously showed in my results. But in terms, if you look in terms of my lap times, I've done pretty much exactly the same lap times this year. Yeah. Um, but the new BM has like, progressed on. Well, for example, this. I, I personally think the super stock wheels are balanced pretty well because if you look at say Luke Luke Mossy's. He's going missed, well, aren't you? missed. I think he's had four DNFs now, and when he's riding well, he's been like winning quite comfortably on on the Kawasaki the same bike as me. So I don't think it. I don't think you can just say it's the bike. But no, I, take, no, I, take, I don't think there's a bad bike. I, I think you're all pretty. Even I take your point it's, about suiting, like for example, that, Glenn. That's what I mean. No, I'm not saying it's a bad bike. Yeah, I'm not saying any bike's bad. What I'm saying is, as you as a rider, what it's, suits you, exactly, what suited yeah. you better. Mm. I'm not saying right that bike's better than that bike. And I do think I mean? I've had to. You see, a little bit with my riding style but more in terms of like what I want out of the bike so in terms of setting it up I think I, when I first got on the Kawasaki and for a, a good few rounds I was kind of searching for a feeling that I had with the BMW that you were never going to find and I was going down an alleyway and it we ended up sort of having to get to a point where we had a reset and we've ended up coming like going a different direction and it's definitely going a lot better yeah um, but yeah it's, a, it's it's a difficult one isn't it I think um, I think you are right in terms of people particularly suit certain stuff. Yeah, exactly. Certain bikes. So I would like to have gone on the bike, but it's just timing and, and it, with our sport, you get you're so invested in what you've got, what you've got, and it's yeah. so expensive you can't just change. Exactly. It, how many people have come knocking on your door? You can't say your names. Everything. No, no. you in Silicon. You had <laughs> <laughs> to dribble on about shite. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying that for a caddy while now, but here you are. But anyway, but I mean, no. But seriously though, you know, you're the senior TT winner. I'm just Silicon. You've been with Silicon a long time. That's a, like a family-based team. You're, you're getting what you what like. Everyone's working together. That yep. team is working well. Why? Why fix something that's not broke? Totally understand that. But surely, people are knocking on your door. Don't have to give me names or nothing. But are people bringing down the door? Not really, no. Really? No, no, I don't get much... Uh, I don't really know. I've never... It is a good question. Uh, if there was a good top Honda team or a top uh, BMW team for... And, like, say, Silicon were taking a year out next year. Yeah. So you had a choice of, um, say, let's just say Padgett's or P. Hickman's team, just for example, or Synetic and uh, Padgett's, which... Um, what do you think... What would 
sort of scratch the itch more yeah. Honda or BM. Which one pays me the most? <laughs> <laughs> both the same wage. No, 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 both yeah. the same wage. I'm only, I'm only winding up. Do you know what? I, I, I don't, I've never even thought about it. I, I don't know. Because mm-hmm. in, ro- in roads, it's... Yeah. I don't... Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. No, it's a, that's a really good question, but I, I, I wouldn't like to say it, man, because I, I don't know. Looking at both bikes, I think they're both a good bike. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, you yeah, should, you should be know. a politician with an answer like that. Right. <laughs> I'm like an MP now. Yeah. <laughs> not saying yes or no. <laughs> no, I, I generally, I, I, I wouldn't know. On the spot, I wouldn't know which one to say I'd, I'd have because yeah. I, I think they're both good. It's just which one's more suited to the job. The weather, new Honda's never been to the Isle of Man, has it? Whereas yeah. the BM's been, had think, so much success there over the I, last few years. Do you, I think the Honda's going to go well. Because what are them... Like, oh, are mate, they I room? can tell you one thing, it ain't slow. Mm. That's what I'm saying. It's just, even the stock bike, it's just... It, what pisses me off with it, the, the Honda thing is there's no like support. We were talking about Kawasaki will give you support. Do BMW give you... No, we're talking about buying a base bike here. You know yeah. what I mean? But Honda, I don't, can, I don't know the ins and outs of what discounts, deals... Mm. I, oh, no, but I'm saying I don't, is, I don't know, yeah. But Kawasaki do give... A level of support you know right. like as a race deal kind of thing but i think honda are the only ones that not right do it and you just think my god it, it, it's almost a shame because if more, what pe- they, more what, people would be on them you well, mean i am mm. and you think what are they rumored at like 217 stock i, I don't believe any cut. of that I, I, all these these horsepower dyno figures that people come out of i don't believe any of them right i know what horsepower my bike is yeah right uh and I'm not going to tell you, right? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and, I, and I've raced on track with Ducati, with Brooks at Thruxton, were close to me, and then the Honda and things like that. And I've heard the rumours of what horsepower their bikes are, and I'm like... Mm. Nah, they're not. Because my, my bike's not slow, my bike's fast. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It is, my Kawasaki's not a slow bike, but the you'd expect the Ducati to have... Uh, it does have an edge, and the, and the Honda being so new. Mm. Would a Ducati, in your opinion, work around the CT course? Mate, I would love to have a go of a Ducati. All right, Paul Bird... Bra- brace down your door. I'd take the Ducati take the, You would take the <laughs> There we are. No. Do, do you know what, right? I don't know why. It'd be like a dream thing, wouldn't it? Because oh, God, like, I... last time a Ducati won around there, it Mike Aylwood in like... No, no. Uh, what it... No, I don't think... No, no. I know the lap record. 127, Michael Rutter's got no, the no, No, who, who won the TT last in a Ducati? Come on. Uh, Jeez, it would have been Aylwood. Would it Aylwood? I think so. Right, I, I won on the ZX-10 dinner, right? On the Superbike race. I was the first person to win a big bike race near Kawasaki since Mick Grant. Fuck off right honestly right since 19 when did he win on the kh750 or something Jeez. 1960 odd right telly was black and white wasn't it eh? that's how many years ago so it could imagine if i went back in a ducati and won and be the first man to win since mike Aylwood. now that would be cool yeah, we'll that would it, be cool, that would it? So, so I, mean, I, I, that, like, that, yeah, I would. I'd take the Jakarta just just on the whim of Mike winning some five breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> is, I tell you what, that, and I, the, the don't forget, he's got to do six laps. There you are, Jesus. But, so oh, that would be good. I would, I, I'd love to go to the Jakarta. I was though. asking. It just I, looks cool. It sounds. It sounds really rattly, oh, but it still you, sounds brilliant. Though, um, by far, my favourite superbike yeah, yeah, all yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. like that was going to be one of my latter it's questions. It's Italian though. Anything you tell me, some Italian that looks shit, whether it's women, bikes, cars, <laughs> even the beer, sexy, the throw, everything yeah, yeah. about it. It's, the Italians could make a turd look good. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? They just do. Don't, don't, yeah. it's, it's right, and I think the Ducati looks nice. I love that. Do you know that? When's the next time we walk by a sh- pile of shine gun? It's not quite Italian it's enough. I'll sprinkle that, some like. glitter on this Italian glitter. Do you know the uh, the MV? It's like a naked MV with the three exhausts. Yes. Uh, yeah. I think that's. They're nice. It's a brutale. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. They are Italian. They just look nice. Uh, we've got. We're on a Patreon page. Usually, when we put a, the guests coming on, we usually get like two, maybe three questions. I think you've got the new record with ten. So I think <laughs> we're going to do. Yeah. Well, I'll pick the best ones out because uh, we could be on all day. Right. The first one, Ryan Garside. Is it true? Oh, that... he's a dick. Just get rid of him. You, Don't you, even... no, I'm joking. No, you read it. You read it. I'm joking. Uh, he's a good lad. But he, he started by saying, "Is it true that you avoided the pod because you just couldn't be asked with two hours of Dominic Herbertson?" Is that right? Is yeah, like I said, he's a rude. dick. Uh, um, let's so, go back to that one. Uh, yeah. uh, second one: uh, Dom's got his peacock, uh, but what's the weirdest thing you've seen or encountered while facing at the TT course? So, have you ever came around a corner and there's been an animal or something? Oh weird yeah, I've seen rabbits. Is it wallabies? I've seen a wallaby. Uh, all sorts of bits. What's a wallaby? Yeah, uh, uh, Quarry Benz was it? Yeah, yeah. there's, there's there like a little wallaby farm around there. What somewhere. is a wallaby? I don't even know. Google, 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 wallaby. Google wallaby and you'll see one. Is it, is it a Manx thing? No, no. Well, they, didn't they want to? Uh, appa- I don't know how true <laughs> this is, but apparently escaped didn't they, from the zoo or something over there, and then the bread and they like yeah. live over there. And there's exactly. loads of them. That's exactly right. Now the thing is, right? You know, I tipped in the Greber cat. That is a wallaby. Let's look. Let me see. Bloody hell! Yes, yeah, it's just a small of it. Kangaroo, yeah. like a little mini kangaroo. Yeah. Wow. 
Oh, <laughs> Christmas. Uh, uh, no, no, no one believes. No one believes. Yeah, me. honestly, they're at quarry bends. No one believes me to this day. If you hit one, though, you'd know about it. Fuck, make a make a right mess. Have you ever hit like I've hit? Yeah, I've birds hit birds and all oh, sorts. Oh, Jesus, isn't that I once hit a bird on my shoulder. I got blood all in my neck, up my face, aye. off the. Oh, mate, honestly. Yep. Where I? Yeah. Fair, like I've come what like screen no screen oh, around the yeah, TV yeah. for that. It's no joke, is it? No. You know what I mean? Just it's buffering. like being shot with a bullet. It is high. <laughs> the northwest worse with the stones. Yeah, broke. I've broken a couple of fingers. Oh, mate, no, the northwest. No, you, you come out of the no the little roundabout, little small roundabout. You come on out of there. Yo, I don't know what yeah, it's called. Oh, yeah, Mill Road roundabout. When you it? transfer over, and you come down there and you get the stones off the track. Oh my god, no, that soft bit of your levers here, mm-hmm. where you get that like neoprene, is it? And you get shot there. Oh, it's the most horrible pain in the world. Uh, <laughs> it's, the, it's bad. I tell you what, um, Thruxton absolutely destroyed my helmet for the same things. Oh mate, that that in, that's like riding through a. This a ball pool compared to going through <laughs> the <laughs> northwest on stones. Honestly, it's really bad. But uh-huh. it, it, it hurts your knuckles through your gloves. I te- like, like you know, when everyone gets their bikes all sprayed up for the northwest, they it's just pointless. put them away. <laughs> yeah. honestly, no, honestly, it is. I, like, I just you said, need to put turn the old fairings. fairings. <laughs> you do put the old fairings on. Like when I went there with me and BM with me mates, I said, "Let's put the old ones. They look shit." I said, "They're gonna look fucking worse." Yeah, they will. Yeah, literally, they. It's the paint is obliterated. Up. Yeah, it's no, bad. That's my. That's the northwest. See, that's massive stone chip on the top. I've had that yeah. touched up by hate and loads. Just <laughs> For people that can't see, it's like the size of a 50 pence coin. That. Oh, God, that's, oh, that, that's probably him, that. Oh, yeah. That's probably him. How can oh, a rock at it? <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Jesse Mortimer. What's the what's the strangest thing or most untrue thing that you have read in the press of, or about you or heard on a podcast or social media? So it's... Uh, you know, I, I don't think I've heard out bad, bad I don't think. Have you Not ever like, like read anything that's just like totally been made up or... No, I haven't. Heard. No, no, I don't. Not that I've heard. Not that I've read. And then again, I don't do a lot of reading. <laughs> uh, um, Mike Orton. It's generally accepted that riding the short circuits is beneficial when it comes to riding the roads, bike fitness, sharpness, etc. Con- conversely, is the opposite true for the short circuits? What I mean with a few exceptions, most road specialists don't run near the front in BSB. Is it because of technique, bike spec, budget, mindset? You, you kind of touched on that a little yeah, bit, didn't I, you? Yeah, I, I think it's... Do you know what? I, that's a good question, that is, actually. I think uh, probably talent's won. Uh, <laughs> do you believe in ta- Oh, God, don't even go down this yeah. road. We talk about it all the time. Uh, it's right, like... I, do, I don't know. I think it's a, a combination of a little things. No, because on you, when you're not a million mile off, it's not a one big thing, obviously. Yeah. It's got to be a combination of a few little things that just needs pointing in the right direction. Would you say you're a talented rider? That... I don't know. I know. No, I, I, just... I, I just said I'm a winger. <laughs> no, no, because I, I remember speaking to you years ago, and it was something that sung in. You just said you were naturally fast. Who said that? You did I? You did I? That's no, a bit big edit for me. It was good. It was good. no, 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 no. It was no, no, no. It was. I'm taking that out of context. That's that was one mean. particular thing. It was something like you were saying. How, we're talking about what the hell were we talking about? We're talking about how did you get that good? You know, how did you get that fast? And you said, well, I I began with a certain amount of natural talent. Did I? You did right. something like I must that. Have been, it wasn't I must no, have been no, no, sarcastic. No, no, I, something like that. No, no. <laughs> God, Venice. Uh, same person. So this is still from Mike. Uh, what does? What does Dean think the lap times will be like? And uh, so, in like, say, three years' time at the TT, Aye. where do you think the like sort of speeds are going? I don't know. That's a good question because I think a lot of that's weather dependent. Because you need a good series of bit of weather, right, to get the rubber laid down on the track. And the more rubber gets laid down, the faster you go. You know, it's like a track when they say a track green. Yeah. Right, it's nobody goes as well. Whereas if you get some rubber laid down, and you don't rain overnight, you don't wash it away. No. Nah. So it all depends on weather factors. But I, do you know what? They're, on, they're only going to get faster out. They're not going to get slower. So do you think not just, unless they change track. As time it's, goes on, do you think they'll just edge up, edge up? Yeah, well, Hailwood said no one will ever go faster than 100 mile an hour. When they did the first 100 mile an hour, bomb, like that was it, wasn't it? It was just like, no one will ever go quicker than that. Yeah. 134s, 35s later. Mm. Yeah, I, th- I think they will keep chipping away, yeah. And it depends on the race circumstances. You've got to be pushing each other to get to it. Mm. Can can you see the TT ever getting stopped? And uh, for what reason would that be? Uh, mate, don't even go there. With some green piece or something on it. That's what know. I mean. It will be, won't it? It'll be something totally out yeah, of our I, hands. You, you, I, I could see it, yeah. I, I, I don't, you, hopefully not, but you, you never say never, do you? Just don't, the world it, will, you, let's be honest. It's if getting two, more two, worrying. Two years ago, if somebody says to you, you're going to get locked in next week for a virus that 99.9% of people don't die. Or Joe, you'd have been like, fuck off, full of shit, you. Next I'm from thing, next thing you know, son, still... you sign house letters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's been a weird couple of Oh, but man, it's just mental. But it is getting, for me, it's getting more worrying. You know, the way the world is, more wet wipes in it and people oh. with more opinions and the that. Problem, the problem you can't is, do this, you can't do that. The problem it's with people worrying. nowadays, right, they need a hobby. 
No, people lack hobbies massively. Uh, people are more interested about Facebook and what other people are doing. Aye. Why don't you stop worrying about what he's doing or she's doing and worry about your own life and do something yourself? Aye. But you can't say that now. No, I totally agree. That's what I think. Aye, oh, yeah, 100%. Like, when right. people are doing something, let them get on with it. Is it affecting you? No. Exactly. Let them get on with it. Yeah. Oh, I'm 100%, 100% behind you. He's going to be a politician. He's uh, going to be Mayor of Bradford Le- next yeah, week. Liam, Ev- <laughs> Liam Evans, if you could change anything about the TT as an event, what would it be? Aye. Uh, the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I move it. Yeah, did, did you ever hear, you, remember that uh, TT World Series thing? Yes. Is that, God, I wish that went. Yeah, I couldn't it, it afford to do good. it. That yeah, would have it been, been good. unreal. Yeah, it would. Yeah. No, I, I, do, I don't know. I, I quite like, I still like the old school. That's why I like the Southern. Oh, so ran in the old school way and things like that. But I'm a bit like old. I, I got stuck in my ways almost. I, I, I struggle to... Is it, what's that Weller advert where you struggle to break the mould, is it? Yeah. Or VO5 or something. There's something in there. Break the mould. <laughs> this, this is a really good uh, point. We kind of touched on it earlier about uh, sort of aiming to win the senior TT and then when you eventually did it yeah. and linking it with um, what happened with Tyson Fury where he sort of he was aiming to beat Klitschko's whole life. Yeah. When he did it, there was almost a, a bit of an anticlimax and the sort of come down from it. Yeah, you I know what you mean, with, yeah. Did after winning it, did you did you did you struggle with um mm-hmm. any like you f- you'd almost feel like you've achieved your life's goal and sort of what next? Or did you not? Interesting. No, I, I know what you say. The, the, these are strange thing and people are going about oh, look, is it depression they say. Uh and things like that. But I, I think racing's a strange one, isn't it? Because you know yourself, when when you're in the in the moment and everything's so busy and, and you win a race and especially like when the Isle of Manx everything is so hectic and then obviously it goes it just goes really quiet and like it doesn't matter who you, I, don't, I don't really know I don't really TT do Blues isn't it yeah so I think it's in general I think I think there's a I don't know that's a difficult one mm. mm-hmm. but no I, I, I just carry on as normal I think yeah fair enough and last last one for now Skiffin Skid Marks uh, what's the crack with the uh, uh, magnet and knowing your logo? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> really? <laughs> hold on, hold on. The Dean, the, Dean, link. the Dean Harrison logo, and you're like, I have no idea. What, yeah, what? I don't know. I, I, I think it's looked cool. Don't you remember you used to play them red magnets in science all the time? Honestly, yeah. it's literally just from science. Pick, picked out of, like, yeah. random. Yeah, it was Phil Dranfield, the Paint Nation, that sort of had the idea. He's like an artist. He's, he's really good, actually. He's good at painting elements. Just... He's really good. He just went, fuck it, we're going to put a magnet on. No, I, just, I used to drink bitter all the time and use like the John Smith ah, logo. Ah, right. But then you're like, nah, I can't get away with that, kind of. John yeah. Smith's like, they can't have that. So I thought, oh, I better change it slightly. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in your today's world, you don't like a copy out. Your lid's cool as well with the flag oh, on. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah, Yorkshire nice. Rose. Yeah, nice. Flag on. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I was do you know what, I was I was get up, off get off my yard. I was up yeah. near uh, Harrogate yesterday when I spoke to you on the phone. <laughs> yeah. And um through no sorry, uh, Richmond. Yep. And uh would uh, so beautiful around right? like sort of little it's places nice, yeah. I've never been in um that, that is that still class as North Yorkshire? Yeah, I think it will be, what, yeah. yeah. But uh, like over the Yorkshire Dales and it's so beautiful like over there and um And what what are you saying wrong with Bradford? <laughs> no, nothing. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so have you seen? Bins. Have you seen my view? <laughs> <laughs> There's some mega, <laughs> mega places through Yorkshire, yeah. and um, I tell you what. Uh, I know your your brother's just next door. Do you want to? Um, should we go and quick uh, grab him and have a bit? He said he would come on for a bit. Yeah, he would. And, yeah. Uh, That's if he's still here. Uh, is it, it, what that time bike, is it now? That bike leaving. Might That's what I thought. Earlier. Bike were leaving early. It might have gone now. Time was. It's half past twelve. Well, he's gone. Look, I'm off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our kid. A quick one on that. Um, do you know when you're going out to say do a do a TT, and you know your brother's in the same race? Yeah. When, if, you know, like for example, if there's a red flag and when you you stopped, um, is your mind must go straight to like? Oh yeah, you think where he is? Yeah. Cause yeah, because I did like when I finished a scene, you know, I waited for him to come back. Yeah, I remember. It's you quite, do that. Quite a poignant. Uh, yeah, you sort do. Of thing. Yeah, of course, you do that. It's like I went. When, when, when went red flag now? And he riding the. I don't know which race it was. The red flag around a thousand race, and uh, you obviously wonder where he is now. We're coming over the mountain, and then I could see him parked at the windy corner. You just catch it out straight away, don't you? But that you, is the thing. I think that's a natural thing, though, isn't yeah, it? Surely it would be. Yeah. Have you had any scares in terms of like red red flag where it has been him and he's been okay, but for like a no, not at the Isle of Man, no, right? No, no, I, no, not any road race really. It's pretty. Pretty, hopefully the was pretty safe. <laughs> do, you get, do you give him uh, tips and help sort of help him out where you can? Yeah, of course. Do. Yeah, tell him what I know, really. Yeah, but uh, the the difficult thing is because my brother doesn't ride a lot. 
And you know yourself, if you don't ride, you're not going to go that fast, are you? Mm -hmm. You need to be on the ball all the time. So when your speed deficit's quite a bit different, you can only try and help somebody so much without saying, do you know what I'm saying? You, you don't want to push somebody. Because mm -hmm. if you start pushing somebody and then they crash, you usually feel like a, you'd feel bad, wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So of course I'll help. If you've ever stuck about it, I'll help him with anything. I'd tell him out. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But it's just... I know I'm not your brother, but would you help me? <laughs> And, and He's not even answering that. Like, yeah. no, get stuff. I would. I, I would. Why would I not? I would. I know. I'm I minded. I know. Thank you very much. And, and I think you. you One thirty here. I go. You, you're well known uh, in the paddock for being like a very, very approachable and very much. Uh, no, when we're talking about like sort of salt of the earth people, right? yeah, that's a, that's a way like say Whit would describe you on the commentary. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever do you ever struggle with the sort of uh, the parallel life of kind of. You you're a family man and you know going to work and whatever and then you when you you say go to the island and you're like a superstar and like the senior TT winner and everyone's desperate to get pictures and autographs. Yeah, no, you do get that, don't you? Yeah, but that, that's the it's a bit, you get stopped in Morrison's for God's sake. You go to the local pub, you get it. You, it's just a. When's the last time you bought a pint? <laughs> when you're on the Isle of Man, when's but, the last time you no, bought I, a pint? I, I, I'm not tight. I'll quite happily oh, buy I'm the beers. I'm not saying that. I'm I, just... had, I, had, I, had, I had a couple of beers last night, actually. Yeah. I went for a thirsty Thursday. Good lad. I, been, Good but lad. I, I can't remember last time I had a pint and me all mangoes are, we're going for a few beers. I went, do you know what? Mint. Our kid came as well. I says, we'll go. So I had two or three beers last night in a game of pool. Okay. That's proper, lad. So d d do you uh, struggle with uh, the, the fame side or do you just do you sort of enjoy it for the, what the, it is? The, <clears throat> I have a mental thing where I block everything. Right. I just I I, I don't react. Hmm. Have you ever seen me angry? Ever seen me? No, I just I, I can't I, I I can't compute uh, bad things happening. I don't react to it. I don't even. I've seen all sorts of things and yeah. I don't. You you've got I don't know. I have like two sides. Like my my, my missus hates it because she says I'm the most emotionless person she knows. <laughs> Cause she's never seen me cry, <laughs> or I don't. I I just I, I. It's hard to explain it the way the way you are. I just don't. I I. I it's emotions were no, a wave. No, no. When people say try emotionally, you get emotionally attached to something. Yeah, of course you get sad. Everyone has sad days and bad days, but I don't show it. I just get on with it because yeah. that's life. Whereas mm. we live in a world now where. People going about depression stuff like that. Everyone gets depressed. Everyone gets a label. Right, yeah. I get depressed. Right. But that's just a fact of life. And it's how the, the the thing is nowadays, it's how people deal with it. But the problem is I think social media fuels it. Do you know what I mean? Like people go like you just says, Oh, you're so busy and you get all this sort of stuff, and then you're at work here doing this, and next thing you're shoveling shit in the garden, you are doing this general stuff. Well, yeah, you, you do something, then bad things happen. Everyone gets it's not going your own way at racing, for example, and you've trying your bollocks off and it's not going good. And like Glenn said of day on that chart thing about getting depressed. Well, everyone gets depressed. Mm -hmm. The must do. No one's happy all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? There's days where you come to work and you think, you know what? I can't be asked. I don't want to do this today. Do you know what I mean? There's days where you go race your bike and you have a bad day and a good day. You can't be the best every day, can you? No. Some days are good day and some days are bad day. Sometimes you find it easy to ride. Some days it's, it's it comes hard and you struggle with stuff. Whether it's a day-to-day -day life thing, whether it's a racing thing, whether it's a work thing, it's all the same. The problem is we live in a world where... Everyone's like, oh, you, everyone's afraid to admit that they do get a bit upset with stuff and, and they find things difficult. But I think everybody gets upset and depressed and finds stuff difficult. You just need to almost, you've got to get on with it sometimes, aren't you? Just, you know, grit your teeth a bit and, and grin and bear it and just don't, sh not that you, you don't have to show it, but some people do show it. And I don't know, I think there's two, there's two people look too much into it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. No, you're right. It. No, no, no. I don't you've, know. You've explained I, it perfectly. Then I don't know. How I explain stuff because whether it's friends going out, general day-to-day -day life things, ringing somebody to talk, so all the rest of it. No one's got somebody there all the time. It's just I, I, you just, just do it, don't you? Just get on with get on with what you're doing. Whether it's motorbike racing, working at Morrison's, or whatever you do, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But I think people need to take a step back from what they're doing sometimes and just think it's not that bad, is it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What what else do you, what, what else can you do? I like the way you no know, when you said yeah. you, when you break down you can always you can always be in a worse position and you, you, well, if you're, you you're can't, don't get wrong everyone thinks they can't be in a worse position but when you look around the world there's people are worse well, off yeah. than most people yeah. here. Mm -hmm. You can you always not agree yeah, exactly. You can always find something that's worse off than you but you can only piss with the cock you've got at the end of the day. Yeah. Within reason. <laughs> you know yeah, I, mean? I know, totally agree. Imagine but, being that last person on earth 
I wonder who that is. You know, when you think there's always someone worse off, and then I wonder if uh, that other person. No, no, uh, no, no, I'm just talking. Nah, actually, I, I no, you're right. <laughs> the thing is, sometimes you find things hard to explain, don't you? When it comes to put everyone, like, say, people says you have your good days, your bad days, but I, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's hard to explain, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not every day is a good day. Yeah. Wait, that's it. And I, oh yeah, very I philosopher. Feel, uh, feeling like ending on a very that that's it. And f what is a philosopher? Well, let, 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 let's end on let's end on a high. What what about the Ducati poor bird, uh, Ducati ride one day around the senior TD? Um, what else is on the bucket list for you? Because you did you've been doing a bit of enduro riding. You've done land to sea and you've done this and, and done that. See the sky, yeah. see the sky, whatever <laughs> it is. I so what? I what quite else enjoyed is on? that. You know, I'd, I'd like to have gone and done that again this year, but it clashes. Uh, what else would I like to do? This book, Dean Harrison's bucket list could be out. It could be out. What would I like? Do you know what? I'd, I'm quite sad, really. I don't know. I don't know what I'd like to do. I no, don't like, we, if you said to me, what would you like to do right now? I, I, it's I, quite I, I can't. I can't give you an answer. See what I'd like to do? Find them fucking five tenths. <laughs> <laughs> That's More definitely... Like all right, they'll definitely yeah, ticking that off. So I, don't, all. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what other things I'd like to do. But I'm going yeah. to enjoy riding this week. I like a bit of that. I don't do a bit of stuff like that. I don't really have any other hobbies, to be honest. Yeah. don't mind a bit of cycling now and again, that's it, but that's hard work over it. Ah, yeah, the good thing about it, how hard do you train? I know, let's not go down this route too often. But Do, you I, know, look like, do thinking, I look like I train? No, but you know what? No, no, like, <laughs> so, do. Like, like, bike, yeah, so, how like you're hitting it three times a week, five times a week? Kind yeah, of I know. I go cycling, enduro ride, and all them sort of stuff. Yeah. I think. Just because, like, that's the thing. If it's not on Instagram, it didn't happen, <laughs> kind of thing. Just, and, yeah, we talked about that. We talked about that. And it's so everyone, everyone now, every day, I'm at gym. You were it, there last week. <laughs> Tuesday, you're at gym again. Fuck, he's at gym again, this. You follow somebody on Twitter or Instagram to see that they go to the gym every week and you're like, mix Why? it up a bit, mate. Well, you must, surely you must do something else. <laughs> you know what I mean? You've lifted the same weight at the same gym, the same time, every week. You're like, fucking oh, Jesus. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> there's no, there's, the thing is with racing now, there's not a lot of characters, is there? No. no. Do you know what I mean? Everything is so robotic. You're like, yes, I had a fantastic race. It was great. Huh? Ah. <laughs> I think we're, you need you need, you need, we need characters. Of, we need characters, yeah, man. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Everyone goes on about. Yeah, I just think it's a bit because it could be too sanitized, can't it? 100%. Yeah, exactly. There's no. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's mad that like your like one of your known racing heroes is David Jeffries. You know, yep. there was a character, drink beer, had a bit of crack. John McGuinness is very much like that. You know, let, let's just have well, a bit of fun with it. McGuinness is the best. Like you speak to McGuinness now, and like it, some of the stories them lads used to go and they got Macau yeah. and racing. They had the crack they had back in the day. And like characters you know, perfect example right tt launch right brilliant night you go up the isle of man you do the chat show on the stage and everything's good right uh and they always put like a bit of an event on for you there's food and all the rest of it and it's a really good i actually really i like going to the isle of man even though when i'm not racing it's just a nice place to be yeah right and you go do that you finish that you go to the pub right have a few beers all the rest of it half it lads go sit in the hotel room eh? don't they? and you're just like wankers you go back to your hotel room have a wank right whereas all the rest of us will go to the pub a few beers and you have a laugh and a general and like even John's, John says to me he goes it's nothing like it used to be if he went back let's say 15 years right he says everyone would be uh, having a good time not, I'm not saying you have to go drink a load of beer and be stupid you go out but just mix it up a bit and have a bit of banter and things like that whereas they don't even do that anymore it's like being like a recluse I'll, I'll go do my chat show it's been fantastic oh I'll take my cycle bike with me and I'll cycle around the mountain <laughs> and then I'll get, I'll get up in the morning and I'll have a granola bar for my breakfast and I'm, it's just like mate just be a, be a man or you know, just yes. be a but just uh, not a man because you shouldn't even say that just be a be a human being a bit uh, stop living like a robot mm -hmm. do you remember the Ulster Grand Prix launch the first one I went to man me and him were in a nightclub at like four in the morning it's just been normal isn't it <laughs> do you know what I mean I, I don't drink a lot I don't go out all the time but uh, you mix it up a bit don't you whereas we live in a world nowadays where everyone's just I don't know, it's full of squares, isn't it? I nah, suppose, I'm... like, fucking have a bit of banter about you, lads. Go do something stupid. Let's go, I don't know. Wait, that's mm. it. Uh, you, you, that's what's missing, I think. Do you know what characters. I mean? Uh, yeah, because I like... Oh, yeah, that is it. Characters. There's no... It's... Everyone nowadays, they're more... They're reserved. almost scared. They're, 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 yeah, they're reserved. It's like they're going to give something away. And you're like, what are you giving away? Mm -hmm. I don't want out for one, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm fine. I can buy my own drink, right? But I just don't... I don't get it. Yeah. This the, that's the bit I think that's missing. I think, I, I, th I think there's. A, I'll finish with this one. I think it's linked. Um, so you can you go now for like say a, a, 
a good night out, uh, you need to take five people from from. It's got to be from racing, but it doesn't yeah. have to be a, com- a competitor. It can be you know like mechanics, past, or present, whatever. any. Yeah. Um, f- so five people. Who would you who would you take for like a proper good night out? That you- oh, I'm thinking so. I'm gonna miss somebody out here, and they're gonna call me a twat if they watch this. Well, just the, who's take the first five, five that come to your head? Yeah, yeah well, obviously ten, I'd go. I'd take Gary Johnson. Right, uh, Alan, my who uh, used to work with us, he's a good laugh. Uh, Johnny's a good laugh. Who else would I take? That's four. Uh, Bobby, the lads I work with are really good at night out. <laughs> That's yeah, why we get along so well. Yeah. All my team's good at that. Uh, but yeah, no, you could. There's a few lads that still have a bit of bit of crack. But yeah, all the. I, I don't know. I think it's the younger ones it now, but they don't like to say they don't make them like they used to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I think you're very, <laughs> I couldn't agree more, mate. I think you're, you're very I much. Agree. I could not agree more. You're on I like agree. a it's very similar wavelength to my to my mechanic piggy, like a sort of. Um, uh, there's no like there's, an analog uh, in a what's the thing you know like an analog, analog rider in, in a digital, digital age. age where like yeah. Uh, like yeah very much hey. uh, like traditional and well no because like I, I think like, I, with the training side of things I believe you do tra- you need to train don't you you've got to be fit to do it yeah. riding the bike's hard so I go cycling I'll do all the riding do things like that to keep generally fit and I, and I do and I believe that you, you need to do nowadays yeah. but there's got to be a flip side mm-hmm. what is it all work no make, play no all play work. makes Jack a dull boy is it yeah damn right <laughs> you know what I mean it's one of them damn right it? yeah it whereas just... it's a bit dull mm-hmm I, 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 like for example, look at like uh, no when you look at racing, right? For example, and you look back at uh, look at Brands Hatch when Foggy were racing there. You look at when Whitten were playing in the Poor Boys, and look at that, and Proper. look at now, mm-hmm. what's happened? Do you think you've skipped an era? Mate, I think I'm born too late. That's what I'm saying. I do you think? That's, yeah, I do. That's, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I would even love the music to shit now. I. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, all the music now is a copy of the '80s anyway, isn't it? But I mean, I just think. Imagine being yeah. there would have do been. Th- do, you, do you ever look back at some then you think, wouldn't you love to have been there? In lot in lots of respects, there's um Yeah. Could, calls could, me a fucking MP. <laughs> no, you, no, <laughs> you could you could go down uh, go down lots of rabbit holes, but in lots of ways I think things are just changing for um The worse? For, yeah. And yeah. I, I yeah, I think it's natural. Stuff to, change maybe... the, nobody'll admit that now. No one says, Oh, that's something you that's worse. Mm-hmm. Because nobody ever wants to be the fall guy. No one's, saying, well, no, no one's got any bottle now to say, yeah, I, I made that decision. It was a shit one. I've made loads of mistakes. Do you know what I mean? In that's done it all, it's done fuck all generally, as they say, don't they? Do you know what I mean, you need, uh, you, need, you need to make mistakes to learn from your mistakes well, yeah, and then yeah. change it and do, uh, try something else. But no one now is manly enough to admit they're wrong. Mm-hmm. But anyway. D- yeah. Dean Harris for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm putting that out there. I'm going to go for my local MP now. Like, good, good lad get, well, it, get it sorted son get it sorted say, um, I know if, uh, it's been a long time coming getting you on the podcast yes. thank so, you for coming on so Thank-er. yeah really gr- uh, grateful for your time I know you're a very busy man and uh, yes yeah, thank You'll you you'll be sending us to build this you'll no stress no, 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 no I'll have to come did you come is it a one time only thing no, no, you can come on again. We'll have to come on again. And oh, no, we love this. We need, we need to give it another a while. Of stuff. We need another season that in the way. Hey, yeah. End of season after, bash. No, we'll, we'll get you back on. After we'll... the TT next year, we'll go. And right. Once, once if I'm you've still added, alive. Added a few more, <laughs> once you've added a few more wins <laughs> to right. the tally. That's but, the um, but yeah, massive thank you to our patrons and our sponsor, Colchester Kawasaki. And uh, good luck at your next uh, work. Next, 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 uh, next yeah, weekend, yeah, you coming down, Dom? I'm not. No, I'm at work, mate. I, I can't. By the way, Chris, I can't make Was it all work, setting. mate? Jacket on, man. Yeah. I, but I am, I've, got, I've got to pay me tyre bill, chaps. That's all the right. difference now. There you are. I need to get faster. There you are. I need to get faster. Well, uh, yet yeah. again, Dean, seriously, thank you for coming no, on. No, thank you. Thank you. Good luck for your next race. Cheers. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Click. Buy. Deliver. With remote purchasing from the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing.